Why, hello there, everyone, and welcome to our collective podcast-style review of the recently released Mario movie. This is going to be, like I said, a podcast-style review, so mostly intended for people who have seen the movie already, but I think that's fine because... I don't know if anybody who hasn't seen the movie would watch a review specifically to learn if they want to go see the movie, because I think anyone that's mildly interested in the movie is just going to see it anyway, right? It's doing really well at the box office. So this is going to be mostly a discussion talking about our impressions of it, what we think about the movie in general. And the movie is so chock full of little references and Easter eggs and all of that. So it's beneficial to have two other people here talking about it with me because surely I missed some things and they might've missed some things also, but between the three of us, we probably should have gotten most of everything on screen. But anyways, joining me specifically is geo, the hero and nitro Sonic who have joined me before for something similar to this in the Sonic two movie review. So you might recognize them, but if not, why don't you guys introduce, uh, introduce yourselves starting with geo. Uh, hi, I'm Gio. I do illustrations and commissions, but I also like to talk about indie games and action games in general, as well as Nintendo games. So I don't shy away. I don't shy away from Nintendo, which is why I'm super excited about the Mario movie. And I was very, very happy with it. So I'm very happy to talk about it today. And you've been streaming mostly on YouTube recently, right? Recently, it's kind of an experiment. Yeah, and I don't know how I YouTube. feel about it, uh, but I do have Twitch as well. And uh, what have what have you been live streaming lately? Still RE4 stuff? Uh, I haven't gone back to streaming RE4. I've been doing that a lot on my own, but they just dropped the mercenaries mode. So I I kind of want to go back and play that online uh, for stream. I think that would be fun. Yeah. Uh, And Nitro Sonic, introduce yourself. Man, what is good, Paisanos? Uh, yeah, so <laughs> I do. <laughs> uh, I, I, got I, I, had, I had to say I had to say it. So, yep. yeah. I primarily do Sonic and fighting game content as well as reaction videos. So how the heck am I here? Well, well, you know, the universe is weird like that. Mario and Sonic go hand in hand. Oh, sure. Why not? <laughs> also, yeah. uh, his videos, he recently made a really well edited review of Sonic Frontiers, way more edited than anything I've made on my channel. So if you guys want to see actual edited content, go to his channel. But uh, for do, this, do we're not- mostly doing it unedited, all <laughs> raw <laughs> Like, if one of us has to go to the bathroom or something, I'm willing to edit that out. But for the most part, I'd rather just keep this all one take. Do not expect stuff on that kind of production quality to opt in, <laughs> I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah, uh, I imagine that took a while. Yeah, yeah it might have. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> and so, uh, like I already previewed to you guys... I would like us to each say our overall impressions of the movie, like very generally. And then I'm going to go through the list of notes that I made when I came back home after seeing it, which are mostly in chronological order. So I'm going to basically be going through the movie scene by scene, talking about my thoughts on each thing. And then you guys can interject with your own thoughts. And Mm -hmm. then after all of that, we can talk about potential sequels, things like that, maybe more meta things, etc. Sounds good. Sounds good. So I'll start with my impressions of the movie. Very general. I liked it a lot. I think the uh, Rotten Tomatoes score or whatever that website's called. That's what it's called, right? Rotten Tomatoes. That's like the big famous one. Yeah. I was going to say Metacritic, but that's only games. Yeah, that's mostly games. Yeah. Yeah. You guys can tell I really don't care about what reviews say. (laughs) Uh, I think the Rotten Tomatoes reviews are being way too harsh. I think it's great. The only real thing that you could critique it on is that some stuff just feels... A lot of people are, I think, paraphrasing what they're subconsciously thinking by saying, oh, the movie's too fast-paced. It's It needs to be slower. I don't think it necessarily is too fast-paced. I just think it feels as if some scenes were straight up cut out of the movie. I, I agree on it being fast, but it, it is fast-paced, but... Uh, I agree with it being it, fast-paced, also, it's also I just don't Mar- think that's inherently the issue. It's 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 also a Mario movie, so it's like, I don't know, do you expect like, me to go, like, super in-depth with things? I think, I think, like, every scene, at least some of the scenes, could have had maybe 30 extra seconds. Yeah, and I'm, also, kind of getting ahead of myself here, but at the end, when they enslaved a Toad... And Peach was like, wink, wink, did you bring me the thing I asked for? And he says, yep. And there's an ice flower in there. You're just assuming he did all of this stuff off screen to get that snuck in there. That Mm. could have been a scene, right? 
just somehow yep. just somehow acquired and, that from uh, somewhere uh-huh. yeah and uh, some of the scenes like when they were inside of the eel when mario and dk were inside of the eel that was supposed to be sort of a character development moment with their relationship and uh when mario peach and toad were in that field of fire flowers which was very reminiscent of the bonfire of dreams scene from berserk by the way i made an absolute banger meme when this trailer showed that when the trailer showed that scene for the first time i just took a screenshot of the field of fire flowers and put guts's theme over it and it got like two likes on twitter which i'm a little salty about <laughs> but uh <laughs> Yeah, those are, that's my only <laughs> possible critique. I think that maybe they were a bit uh, trigger happy with the cutting out of scenes. Maybe they were super obsessed with we have to maximize audience retention. We can't have anyone walk out of the theater. It needs to always be fast paced. Something has to always be happening and moving to the next scene. Right. I mean, but I everything, mean, everything that's in the movie, I think, is great. The critique is just what's not in the movie. Right. Like there could have been more. But everything that is in the movie on screen, I think, is amazing. And it's mostly a fan service movie, right? Uh, I think Sonic is probably a better movie in general, just treating them like actual movies. Sonic has a better beginning, middle, and end, right? An actual story. Hmm. Whereas the Mario movie is something that you go to see purely for the novelty of seeing all these different things from the game animated on screen because everything in the movie looks great, right? Yeah, it's like, the in terms of fidelity, it's like, illumination's best looking film i think yeah and i really like how uh there's a textile a textural feel to a lot of the things on screen like uh, the, sort mushroom, sort of the mushrooms the mushrooms look as if they have some kind of felt texture is that just me yeah it had a texture wow a lot of yeah. textured objects a lot of textures on the clothes too texture. i'll leave it at that before i start going through chronologically so anything else you guys want to say in general i mean I, I don't have too much to say other than the fact that, yeah, it's just a good, fun movie. It almost, like, like literally, I I, I I was, I went there with my brother and, like, I literally just, I literally told him, like, you know, it was almost as if we just played a freaking Mario game. Uh, yeah. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of camera shots in the movie that make everything into a 2D perspective and, like, Mario and Luigi yeah. just, like, doing their thing in, like, 2D. I was really impressed uh, in just how many different games were represented here oh like, yeah obviously obviously you have like super mario bros 3 and super mario world stuff that was expected but then uh some of the other stuff like the mario odyssey stuff like wedding bowser i was not expecting that at all they had 3d uh, world stuff as well yeah a lot of 3d world stuff a lot of wii u era stuff which is funny considering the wii u is like nintendo's most uh shameful era right but i guess because they keep porting the, the wii u stuff onto the, the switch console- they're okay with it the console itself was a failure, but the game, the game 3D world had a lot of uh, appealing stuff. I just think say. it's funny that they're using Wii U ports to essentially push sales of the Switch. Like with the I cat think, Mario. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, you know what? I think I, I don't have an issue with it because not many people bought a Wii U. So I imagine yeah. it's, it's basically just repurposing what you have. Oh, it didn't work in this way. Let's try it in this way. It's a perfectly good game. Just bring it to more people. Uh, anything else you want to say, Gio, before I start going in chronologically? I was just smiling from beginning to end. I was so happy. Oh, Mario <laughs> World was my first uh, game when I was a same. kid. Yeah, o- also it, it, for me. It came out like early, early 90s, I think 1990. I don't know if I got it then, but I know that I was very young. So like it was very impressionable upon me. And even though I don't play many Mario games lately, like usually when they come out and then I d- put it down for a long time. But like it's just so nostalgic watching this movie and just just being happy for the entire thing like any mistakes it could have made i i kind of forgive them but like i just thought it was fun maybe some things sacrificed with character development but like not bad i am a little disappointed that they teased so much stuff in the trailers making you think oh there's going to be more of this but then when you see the movie it the the footage from the trailer was literally all of it so for example they showed the yoshis in the trailer I don't, mm-hmm. so I don't remember think, them. Oh, there's going to be Yoshi stuff. And then you see the Yoshis in the trailer and it's the same exact clip. For, you see them in the movie and it's the same exact clip from the trailer. And that's it. I'm going to be real. I don't remember seeing Yoshis in the trailer. <laughs> so, it was during so, the, so, uh, so, I, so, I, so I saw them in the theater. I'm like, oh, look, Yoshis. <laughs> it's, uh, it showed the clip of them when they were sort of doing that travel montage of when they were somehow walking through dinosaur land, even though they were in Mushroom Kingdom still, because I think they combined them to the same place. Hmm. And it you didn't break out apple. your magnifying glass to look at the trailer super closely. 
Well, I'm not freaking. I'm not Yoshi, googling I'm trailer, it. so it's like freaking. It's when they it's when they picked an apple, right? And then you have Yoshi's in the background, which is obviously supposed to imply that it was dinosaur land. That's what it's called in Mario World, right? Dinosaur yeah, land. yeah, yeah, yeah. Dinosaur yeah. land. When I recently played it, I I thought the whole place was Yoshi's Island, but no, it's dinosaur yeah. land. I I'm but there's an area in Dinosaur Land called Donut land donut Mm -hmm. donut plains i believe okay because i didn't know if it was dinosaur world and donut land and that's why i was mixing up dinosaur and land uh the whole area you guys know what i'm talking about yeah that's what i thought okay not that the geography of mario really matters much Uh, (laughs) also so now that i'm about to get into talking about it chronologically i forgot to ask you guys at the beginning did either of you guys get one of those mystery block popcorn tins uh, no, no, I, no. Okay, I we, have to flex it a little bit then. Freak, I went to Showcase Cinema, and there was no AMC anywhere near me, and I think it was exclusive to AMC. Yeah, me? it was exclusive to AMC. I had to go out of town to get one. Me and my brother just went to the theater early. We weren't even going to get snacks, and then he just said, do you want a drink? I'm like, I'll take like a lemonade, and then he just came back with a small popcorn, that was it. We just we were just going to watch yeah. the movie, man. <laughs> it literally says AMC theaters on it, so I'm assuming that's uh, why. You you know, you you may have the big uh, popcorn block, but I has I still have this little uh, this little block, this little tin block that had candies in it. <laughs> oh, I cute. think I know what you're talking about. I have the the mushroom one. Yeah, the yeah, I had had a little like uh, can, the little can, like sugary candies in there, hard candies. Oh, yeah. the novelty thing, yeah, right? Yeah, but not from the thing. movie. Yeah. Okay, because I have those well, two. Well, and those well, candies not, well, not are from so the movie. They can, the movie. They can says, break your teeth. <laughs> It freaking says it freaking says new Super Mario Bros at the bottom. So, it's, uh, coin candies. That's what it was. That's what it was. The really mm. cool part about this is that in addition to it being metal, it's actually beveled. So the mystery mark is beveled convex. Oh wow! Like it's it's uh, protruding out, and the little circles in each corner are concave. They're an indention into the box. So it has actually some uh, some textural intrigue to it instead of it just being like a design printed on the side of a generic metal tin right nice a snake just that little bit just that little bit makes it feel as if it was something specifically made for the movie which makes it feel a bit more special so anyway i had to flex that <laughs> because i had to drive out of town for it so excuse me yeah man i'm salty about it but salty i'm glad the popcorn? that you got it you're salty as the popcorn though <laughs> yeah <laughs> <Hey-o>. <laughs> okay so uh i'll go through it chronologically now <clears throat> First thing I should say, I'm surprised I didn't bring this up earlier. I had to remind myself from looking at my notes. Uh, Did you guys read any of the script leaks before the movie came out? No. No. (laughs) Because I did, thinking that it wouldn't be true at all. But the leaks were 100% true. So you spoiled it for yourselves. Yeah, Yeah, I spoiled the movie for (laughs) myself story-wise because I thought there's no way it'll be true. Let's just see what this guy said, right? I de- but, I, I, def- I definitely can't be that kind of guy. I gotta I got I gotta be surprised and like be filled with wonder going to a, a Mario movie, you know? <laughs> I didn't think it would be true, but as soon as they went to Mushroom Kingdom, I realized wow, those leaks were spot on. That's what's going to be the rest of this movie. Oh I don't my think they really I've seen the movie already. <laughs> I don't think they really hurt my enjoyment of it though, because like I said, it's not really about the story, it's about the novelty of seeing everything on screen. Right. Uh, so I just wanted to point that out because I don't hear many people talking about that. Maybe not many people read the leaks, but those leaks were 100% true. I wasn't even uh, aware of a script leak. Uh, I was just dumb. I'm just minding my business until I went to the theater. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really want to share it around because if they did end up being true, I didn't want people to blame me. Oh, you obviously don't want to share. Them, but you don't want to share yeah. spoilers. Obviously, it's I a was willing Mario to movie. take that risk on myself. <laughs> uh, uh, so the opening scene is the penguins, right? Yeah. Bowser's Castle flies in with the penguins. I think it's really cool, even though a lot of this is from the trailer, so people might have already mentioned that was, this. That was actually the first thing it showed, too. Bowser, yeah, first, ba- Bowser invading the penguins, you know? Yeah, so they must have thought it was just a really strong opening shot, so they wanted that to be people's first impression of the movie in general, including the trailers. So I think it's kind of cool that the uh, floating castle is shot in a way that was very similar to his airship from Mario Galaxy. Hmm. I could see that. But it's the actual floating castle from like Yoshi's Island or Super or uh, Paper Mario, right? Paper Mario. The, 
Paper Mario, it's the floating castle with oh. the uh, spinning, or not spinning, but the uh, swinging like pendulum f- spike balls hanging from it. The first Paper Mario. Yeah, the first Paper I remember it distinctly I because some of the spikes were clipping into it as they were swinging. Man. And the castle is perfectly still, and yet they keep swinging, and it drives me insane trying to figure out why do they keep swinging like that. I, I have more uh, experience with Thousand Year Door, to be honest. <laughs> is I haven't played Thousand Year Door. Is it in that one as well, or is it not? Uh, friggin' what? The castle. The I don't no, think so. No, 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 no. Okay, but you guys know what I'm talking about, right? It's in Yoshi's Island as well. I'm pretty sure. It's been a long time since I played some of those games, but it, it, in the first Paper Mario, was it Bowser's castle underneath Princess Peach's castle? Uh, I don't think so. I remember it just floating around. Because I thought at the very end of the game, you fight Bowser on top of Princess Peach's castle. And like you go through an entire dungeon beneath it. I might be remembering incorrectly, and it's probably not that important to the movie. Well, <laughs> my point is that it immediately sort of establishes uh, simulated nostalgia in the sense of it being very much like Mario Galaxy, but it's using something from the older games, right? Instead of it just copy and pasting a scene from one of the games. And of course, the the penguins are from Mario 64. That's obvious. And... Yeah. Uh, that was pretty much just to establish that Bowser's the bad guy and he's the aggressor in the situation, right? An actual antagonist. Yeah, and he's, I like, it w- he's like the big tough guy. No one can stop him, you know? I was surprised that the Power Star wasn't one of many. So I was expecting... I got the sense from the trailer that when he grabbed the Power Star, that was one of many, right? And I thought that that opening scene was showing that he was going on a conquest to take the Power Star from each uh, kingdom, if you will, right? So he started with the easiest one from the penguins, and then he... It, well, it sort of implied he had already taken over another place, the Badlands, right? So I thought that the Mushroom Kingdom was the last one with a power star that he needed to get all of them. Because I thought they were pulling like a Mario 64 and that you needed a certain amount to do something. But no, mm-hmm. that was literally... But that was literally the only power star in the story, which is weird. They, because I don't know why the penguins were trusted with the only power star. Instead of Mushroom Kingdom, when Mushroom Kingdom was obviously at least a bit more defensible. The okay, so first of all, I don't even know how the penguins even got the dang star. <laughs> yeah, that's why and, I was thinking everyone like, would have one. And like, like uh, I was thinking it was going to be like Adventure Time. And like, the like star- every every princess has one of those gems for the Enchiridion. Oh, but like the stars in Mario sixty four, they were used to um, undo what Bowser had done to the castle. Yeah. So it's like... It's such a convenient MacGuffin, though. I didn't really know what the Power Stars were going to do. I just were... I was assuming that there would have to be more than one. One per kingdom. I mean, they're, And they're, they're, he needed all of them to do something, and so the Mushroom Kingdom had to stop him from getting the last one he needed. I mean, I... I, I that would have been cool, but this this star is actually called something different. It's the Super Star. He did, they didn't say Power Star? No, it was called the Super Star in the movie. Huh. Yeah, so, interesting. And, and that's why I thought it was weird because in the games, like the stars, like if you get a star power up, it's not that great. It's just over in like 10 seconds. But they treated this superstar as if it was like getting the freaking chaos emerald. Yeah, that's why I'm thinking it's not really a star power. Literally up. It's thinking a star that. F- <laughs> I, there's something at the end I thought was very similar to Sonic that I'm going to get to uh, once we get there, if we get there. Um, yeah, that's why I was thinking instead of it being like a power up, they were thinking more like Super Mario 64, even though it does end up being the power up as well. That's why I think it's weird that Bowser had 100% of the power at the start because he could have just used it like a power up. But I'm he's, assuming that would have been kind of wasting it. He wanted to sort of save it to be a long term power source. Yeah, he, he must have known it's temporary. So, yeah, he's probably going to use the star to literally be invincible and destroy Mushroom Kingdom. Okay, so moving on, since we're literally just in the first scene, and we're 18 minutes Mm -hmm. in. uh, So, then it cuts to Brooklyn, because it is the Brooklyn version of Mario. And also, I just want to preface this by saying, I have seen every episode of the Super Mario Bros. Super Show, and I've also recently seen every episode of the Donkey Kong Country CG show. So Okay then, brother. (laughs) Allow me to to flex that I've seen... uh, all of that. Uh, I don't know. Have you guys seen those? I don't think I've watched a that, single full episode of that Mario okay, show. I so, just, so I just remember that drug that ad. <laughs> let me flex that I've consumed more horrible TV than you. 
good. I grew up with those shows and I didn't even watch them. Like I, I watched more of the Mario show than the Donkey Kong one when I was a kid, but I didn't watch them in their entirety. OK, so the reason I'm bringing it up is because in uh, the Super Mario Bros. Super Show, that's also the Brooklyn lore instead yeah. of them being Italian. Right. Yeah, I'm assuming yeah. the way they're sort of marrying all these lures together is that they live in Brooklyn, but maybe their family's from Italy. Right. Uh, but it immediately opens with a gag. Right. Because it shows the Super Mario Bros. Uh, commercial, like the plumbing commercial, which was part of the movie's marketing campaign, by the way. The girl in the commercial that says the only thing you haven't drained is my bank account. Uh, that is the voice actress of Princess Toadstool from the Super Mario Bros. Super Show. Ooh. Oh, interesting factoid. That's, yeah. that's an interesting callback right there. Okay. Yeah, so it opens with that and they're in uh, some kind of restaurant and they're they're watching their own commercial and they wonder, oh, you think the accents are too thick? Oh, maybe we laid it on a bit too thick there. And there's is it Jumpman playing Jumpman yeah. or is it just a guy playing Jumpman? Because things are going so fast. I feel like I might be misremembering some of this stuff. Well, the, the arcade machine said Jumpman, but yeah, the design it, of the guy was like old school Mario okay. from the arcade yeah. games. So for anyone that doesn't know, Jumpman was the name of Mario before he got the name Mario in Donkey Kong, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, Jumpman, who it said Charles Martinet was in the movie. So I'm assuming mm -hmm. that there was a gag with that somewhere. Maybe Charles Martinet was voicing Jumpman. I wasn't able to catch it because, like I said, it was going so fast. Do you guys know who Charles Martinet was voicing? Yeah, he was voicing that guy and was? also okay. Mario's father. OK, so, yeah, Charles Martinet playing Jumpman told them, no, nah, the accents are good. Don't worry about it, because they were wondering, oh, maybe we laid on the accents too thick. And so, he said it in the accent. Too. He's like, it's a perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it immediately opened with a super self-aware gag, which I think is funny because so many people were concerned about the whole Chris Pratt Mario thing. Because Chris Pratt was saying, guys, my Mario voice is unlike anything you've ever heard. And then we finally heard the trailer and it's just, let's -a go. Look at me. I'm a Mario. Right? <laughs> <Let's> -a <go. laughs> and it immediately opens with them laying on a thick accent and then saying like, oh, that's not actually how we talk. We just did that for the commercial. <laughs> so I actually thought that was funny. It made me not care about the whole Chris Pratt thing for the whole remainder of the movie. In fact, I don't think he was actually that bad. I still wish he could have laid it on a bit thicker, but that uh, gag was pretty funny. Chris Pratt, and then Chris Pratt as Mario, just it's crazy. Everyone freaked out about that at first, but then like dirt, like watching the movie, it's like it, it was just like working, but it, but it also wasn't it was standing out that much. It's just like yeah, I whatever. It was okay. It was it was fine. I just wasn't thinking then, about it anymore. <laughs> hey guys, look at me. It's a me, Mario. Let's go. I'm Mario. <laughs> Uh, inside of the restaurant was Spike Foreman from Wrecking Crew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so uh, for anyone that doesn't know, Mario was the main character in so many games on the NES, including Wrecking Crew. Uh, so they couldn't make Mario working at Wrecking Crew and also being a plumber at the same time in this movie. So they just had Foreman Spike being as sort of this uh, pseudo antagonist uh, taunting them about their plumbing venture right yeah because freaking mario and luigi they just ditched the job to freaking start a plumbing business i don't know Neat why out. but for some reason at first when i saw spike it was making me think of the enemy spike the ones when that, i heard that the ones spike that was in the movie the, the ones that spit out the uh oh like the little green dude cylinders. the shell oh. yeah, yeah. And, I, and i thought they were pulling a live action mario movie have you guys seen the live action mario movie from the 90s yes yes, yes. yeah i thought they were pulling a live action mario movie because i remember in that movie there were a lot of enemies that were just human characters like i thought that maybe i might be misremembering but isn't there a human spike in that movie or am i just thinking of big bertha because big bertha is a human in that uh. as well First, for, first thing, first thing I remember is the Goombas, and it's literally big, tall yeah. lizard dudes in suits, and then Yoshi, yeah, and then Bertha. Yoshi is literally a freaking dinosaur. Yeah, uh, I like the live action Mario movie. I actually like it. I think it's a very unique aesthetic in being uh, Dino Punk. I, I can't think of anything else that's Dino Punk. Anything else that's Dino Punk. I respect <laughs> the artistic direction of that movie. Uh, I like it. Um, I, so I, I gotta watch it again. Then I don't know. I. I I think I I'm good, no man. I think I'm good. Of it. <laughs> Maybe my taste is just horrible after watching the Super Mario Bros. Super Show and CG Donkey Kong. Probably. I know, punk. Uh, so don't take my word for it. Uh, but I thought they were going to pull something like that, but then I had to remember, no, wait, Foreman Spike is literally a character from Wrecking Crew. He's sort of the antagonist in Wrecking Crew, right? 
Yeah, he's uh, and, he, uh, he shows up during the bonus game. Uh, you try to hit the door, and yeah. it's like, oh, you got, oh, you get to hit. Um, I think you get to hit him first in the bonus game, or b- before he hits you, or something like that. Like, he, like and uh, you got yeah, hit something like that. I don't, think, I don't think anyone has played a lot of Wrecking Crew. Everyone's just kind of played it for a few minutes. Yeah. Yep. I didn't <laughs> love it. It was all right. I guess. A, I, can't I, wait I think to it has. Get, a, I think it has a stage adder though. <laughs> watch. I'm going to get the one Wrecking Crew speedrunner on planet Earth t- talking in the comments. Um, actually, um, actually, here's the real lore <laughs> performance. Don't by, even. <laughs> don't um, even. <laughs> Uh, man. And another reason why I'm bringing up Super Mario Bros. Super Show is that Mario's father has the facial hair with the mustache that connects to the sideburns. I might be wrong, but I think the character design of Mario's father is based on the Lou Albano Mario from the live action segments of the Super Mario Bros. Super Show. Yeah, hey man, that's true. That's a neat detail. <laughs> I so, just all, I, all, 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 all I was thinking was, wow, it's Mario and Luigi's family. <laughs> I looked it up to see if I was remembering how he looked correctly, and he doesn't have that facial hair in all of the screenshots, but I did see some screenshots with that exact facial hair. So I think that is a Lou Albano thing. I'm just, I'm just freaking yeah, thinking. I'm just freaking thinking to myself at the end of Yoshi's Island when Yoshi hands Mario and Luigi to their parents that you know we don't see their parents, and now in this movie yeah. we see we see their parents like oh hey cool and like they got yeah. siblings in junk. <laughs> yeah, I thought the family was really funny, especially how you had that <laughs> like that his, the, his, the, his, the, his dad bringing Mario down, you know. Yeah, and then you had the the senile old guy that's not even listening. I mean, we're—I mean, we're—we're we're, we're kind of skipping past when uh, they get that the, the gig at the fancy place. Um, yeah, so I think it's very, very uh, weird and kind of funny that their father is disapproving of their venture into plumbing, because normally this sort of uh, cliche about a father not supporting their kids' business would be if they're doing something very experimental like maybe they quit their job to go pursue some kind of art thing and the father is not supporting because he thinks that it won't make money right well but maybe plumbing like is one of the most stable jobs on the planet they're telling their dad hey dad we learned a trade so that way we could go have a stable plumbing job so what father would not approve of their kids learning a trade with 100 percent job security I think it was mostly because of the video that they made and it made them look like fools. Like maybe they weren't capable of handling themselves. I just think it's really funny because you know what I mean by this trope usually having to do with like starving artists or something like that. Right? Yeah, I don't think course. I've ever heard. I don't think I've ever heard of plumbers being out of a job, uh, <laughs> especially because they immediately get a call. Right. And then there's that sort of uh, 2D side scroller perspective of them going there. That was neat. Uh, which I will refer back to because they were basically establishing that Mario was already sort of a parkour expert. So <laughs> yes. my, brother, my brother actually pointed it out that it was kind of weird that he was so bad at the training course in Mushroom Kingdom when they already kind of established that he was good at parkour. Well, the training course had actual stakes. It was dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but supposedly uh, that side scrolling part was actually a recreation of 1-1 in the original Mario Brothers. I didn't oh, really? look at it. I didn't like look the, at the it actual, specifically. The actual composition of the level. That's what I heard. Well, and I didn't even catch it because the aesthetic is so much different. I should rewatch that. See, this is certain why things I brought were you guys on here. to be like Mario blocks, like um, certain parts of the background were supposed to be like, oh, this could be like a Mario block, but it was just part of the background. Yeah, I'll have to re- rewatch that looking for it because it being a completely different aesthetic made me not even look for that. Mm, that Blu-ray going to sell like hotcakes, I tell you. <laughs> I saw one of the Blu-rays you can pre-order. Instead yeah. of it being in a normal Blu-ray case, it's in a star-shaped case. That's I was thinking Walmart. about pre-ordering that. Walmart. But it sounds like a nightmare to store on my shelf because I can't really put it with the other Blu-ray cases. If it's got if it's got freaking uh, holes in the back that you could use to hang it up, hey. <laughs> that would be cool. Got I think it for comes that. with a stand. I think it comes with a stand. Oh, it does, actually. Yeah. Um, and also before this, Mario is playing Kid Icarus on a television. Oh my I thought that gosh. was a very interesting <laughs> choice. There are so many NES games they could have picked, and they picked Kid Icarus. It's also weird that Kid Icarus is an IP that exists in this universe, but Mario does not exist as a game in this universe. It's weird to think yeah. Kid I- think of Kid Icarus existing without Super Mario Bros. to push sales of the NES, right? 
Not and only that, R- but there was an R wing on top yeah, of the TV. Yeah, I was going to say oh, that. Yeah, like, he had an R wing yeah. on the TV as well. And I'm sure there were other things in the room as well. He had a ton I of posters looking, and stuff. I was looking. I was looking so carefully. I was honestly saying references out loud. I'm like, I'm like, I'm looking yeah. at all the backgrounds. You know, the restaurant's called Punch Out Pizzeria. For example, I forgot like, about that. Yeah, freaking like it's crazy just how much they sprinkled all over the place. Which is and, funny uh, if you think about it, because in the original Punch Out, Mario was the ref. So it makes me think: yeah. Did Mario have a ref job before this? Oh man, <laughs> possibly. Was they're Lil kind Mac, of implying they're was, kind of implying that maybe they were taking a whole bunch of random odd jobs before going for plumbing, and maybe that's why Foreman Spike was already sort of uh, having like a negative rapport with them, because I don't think he would just randomly antagonize strangers like that. Yeah, man, I wonder if and, uh, Lil Mac was somewhere in the background. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Pauline was in the movie for like three seconds. That was a surprise appearance. Because after uh, Mario and Luigi take that one job, which was ruined by the dog that pretty much looked like it was straight out of another Illumination movie, like Secret Life Se- of Pets yeah. or whatever. I, I was just yeah. thinking, like, is, is this dog from Secret Life of Pets? <laughs> like, dang, it just really does look like one. Yeah, the city, the city starts flooding, and Pauline is there on the news. I wish we had a bit more of Pauline, but I'm happy that she was in it. Uh, obviously, kind of... Not that she's from, not that she debuts in Mario Odyssey, but that's the most recent thing that she's that been was in. So, that in was so memory. cool. That was so cool she was there. So I'm and I'm assuming them having her in Odyssey as the mayor of New Donk City is what sort of influenced them into having her there as the mayor talking on the news, right? Well, yeah, I mean, after that, they put her in freaking Mario spinoffs. So, yeah, I guess she's got, like, you know, the typical Mario character treatment. And uh, so they go down there to fix the flooding, right? Yeah. And as they're going down there, it even says level one, two. Yes. yes. And, and they and, play, and they play the music like yeah, briefly. And so that that segues me into talking about another thing I liked about the movie in general. Whenever something's happening that's new, it has an associated theme that's playing as sort of a light motif that weaves its way into the soundtrack naturally. So the level one, two theme started playing when they went to level one, two, when it said level one, two, for example, later, like when they put on the Tanuki suit, you hear a track playing from Super Mario Bros. Three. And then, of course, mm-hmm. you hear the invincibility music theme when they use the star. Yeah. And you hear you hear the fanfare when they get on the flagpole. So I'm just, mm-hmm. I'm just mentioning that now because there are so many instances of that happening in the movie. I probably won't be able to bring up everyone. And actually, because- like and actually before they were walking down the stairs, they crashed into the into the wall and the hole in the wall was in the shape of 8-bit Mario, like from Super Mario Bros. Like in the shape oh, really? of it, was in it? the shape of his head. How did I miss that? I freaking caught it though. I <laughs> caught it. I saw the shape of 8-bit Mario's head as the That's hole funny. in the wall. I'll have to look at that next <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> That's that that's freaking real. That's crazy. So oh, they speaking s- of the music, like they also had licensed music too, which threw me off yeah, pretty so, hard. Can't uh, I had actually <laughs> I had actually watched Dungeons and Dragons earlier that day because I drove out of town to get the metal tin, right? And I was expecting to meet up there with a friend, but he wasn't able to show up. And I thought, well, I don't want to have driven that long just to pick up a metal tin only to drive all the way back so i figured i should somewhat take advantage of me being here so i watched dungeons and dragons by myself and i was surprised that that movie had no licensed music it has no yeah, licensed music so i can't believe a super mario bros movie has more licensed music than a dungeons and dragons movie when they could have like easily you know dungeons and dragons being very much an 80s thing i thought they were going to play into that a lot but it actually didn't it took itself completely seriously and it wasn't like a weird meta thing where whoa this whole movie was actually someone's campaign or just constantly interjecting 80s music or anything no uh no licensed music at all there was a tame impala song at the end but that was made specifically for the movie it's funny that you saw it that day because I saw it earlier that day also the same day. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I liked to ask it. It was you what good. You thought about it, but I don't want to derail this uh, video. This might become a deep course. podcast. Oh geez, yeah, <laughs> yeah I didn't sign so up for I that. Just, <laughs> I saw on Twitter someone said I didn't check, but they said that the soundtrack, some of the soundtrack leaked for the movie, 
And in it, they heard some kind of Donkey Kong Country song, which was amazing. But it wasn't in the movie, and they're assuming it's because it got replaced by a licensed song, presumably oh. when they were getting driven to the Jungle King- Kingdom Castle, which is kind oh. of a shame. There was like a hopefully l- they release it. There was like a, it's a little shame, bit of but a jungle. I love Take On Me, and that was the song that they put there, and I love yeah. that song. <laughs> there was like a little uh, bit of a jungle jape sounding tune when they arrived at the Kongs. Yeah, island, a little but, bit. But, but that's about it. Yeah. Okay, so going back in chronological order, they get mm-hmm. sucked into the warp zone. Also, in the Super Mario Bros. game, level one two at the end of level one two is where the first warp zone is. So yeah. th- that's good. actually. Very cool. Yeah, so that's actually consistent. And in the warp zone, somehow Luigi gets separated because there's sort of a storm. And I got the sense that it was somehow related to Bowser. I don't know if you guys know much about Warhammer 40K, but the way I rationalized it was... So in Warhammer (laughs) 40K, without making the video five hours long, there is an alternate parallel dimension called the Warp or the Immaterium. And it's as the name suggests, an immaterial plane of existence, but it exists uh, coinciding with the physical plane of existence. And uh, things have a sh- anything that exists in the physical plane has a shadow in the warp. And so uh, your emotional energy exists in the warp. And so uh, there's a part in the lore where this... this uh, super big demon thing called Slanesh gets born because an entire race of aliens called the Eldari, they're basically elves. They basically become so hedonistic and start having all these like giant like space brothels and everything that they give birth to Slanesh in the warp. And when Slanesh is being created in the warp, it has storms in the warp. And that's usually what humans use to have uh, faster than light speed travel, they would go into the warp and travel that way. So as Sl- Slanesh was being birthed, it was causing all these warp storms and then they couldn't go through it. That's the sense I got. You guys understand what I'm saying? Like maybe Bowser was doing all this. Bowser was wreaking so much havoc and causing so much emotional distress in the Mushroom Kingdom that it was having a reflection in the warp zone dimension, which is why there was sort of a literal storm there that separated Luigi because they never explained this. I, right in the whole right? story, bro. I love your theory. Um, <laughs> I didn't think about it that hard because it was like a honest. storm. There I was like a storm, the, I and I don't know if it was, was just my imagination, I, I think, but I thought I, think I heard the, Bowser's laugh. So I think the storm was just kind of a visual indicator that that was a a, a warp pipe to the dark lens. Okay, so yeah, maybe <laughs> that's that's I what that's I, what I don't know why he would randomly be separated because I'd imagine the warp zone to, under normal circumstances, always bring people to a specific spot instead of them getting separated like that. Because it seemed like a storm of some kind, right? Uh, like I, th- I mean, I think there was like a lightning strike, and then oh, they open their eyes and they're in separate uh, tunnels. Um, I mean, if you think about Mario 3D World, there are certain pipes you could go in that have different paths that you could go in. So there could be connected paths that lead to different places once mm. you go in a pipe. Though in three, um, th- though in 3D World, the, the pipes even through. Like when you see all the pink in the background, like the pipes are still like physical. In this case, they were going on some kind of weird yeah. uh, sort of sh- ocean stream looking thing. Uh, that's that's the first of what I think is sort of alluding to Mario Galaxy, but I'll get back onto that later. Uh, so I'm trying to go through this faster. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're trying, man. <laughs> so Luigi pretty much immediately gets captured. I like that he was put in a situation that was pretty much a horror movie because ever since Luigi's Mansion, Luigi's whole brand is that he's finding himself in these horrifying situations, <laughs> right? It's great. <laughs> I thought the dry, I thought the dry bones looked great because when the dry bones fell apart and came back together, they had to animate all of these individually moving pieces of the dry bones, right? Oh yeah. I, so I thought that looked really good. Uh, but they capture him because there are shy guys in the uh, fort that he locks himself into. Oh, yeah. And uh, Bowser uh, interrogates him. I don't remember Luigi ever actually saying the name Mario to him, but I'm assuming he did. Because later when Bowser sees Mario, he says, oh, it's Mario. He says his name. And I I remember thinking, where did he ever hear the name? But I'm guessing he must have heard it from Luigi. But I thought it was funny. Bowser literally says, kill. He says he's going to kill Mario. Mm-hmm. Normally, uh, in a, normally in a PG thing like this, they say, I'm going to defeat him. I'm going to destroy him well, or crush not, him. But he well, says, well, once I kill your brother. It's not they a G-rated. A so like, few times in the movie. 
Like, I think even at the very beginning, like when he was at the Penguin Kingdom, d- did he say like uh, surrender or die or something like that? I feel uh, like I recall maybe. that. Maybe. What were you saying, Nitro? Uh, what was I saying? I don't, I don't remember why I said. I'll okay, just, I'm I'll moving on. on. <laughs> uh, because we need saying. to go faster. Um, also, Bowser playing the piano. It said Ludwig, Vo- Ludwig von Koopa on the piano, which is one of the Koopalings. Uh, I was expecting to see them in the movie, but I guess that's the sequel, maybe. Um, It could just be that the Koopalings don't exist in this continuity, but it's also possible Uh, that the Koopalings do exist. And uh, despite him being a simp for Peach, he actually like had kids with someone else and he just left them. And Ludwig happened to create all these pianos. Yeah, I was about to say the piano said Ludwig von Koopa. And also, like, there's a part where they're look you know with the hanging prisons uh you know there were koopa clown cars that but the koopas were in those uh they actually had koopa clown cars again later on another part i think it's when they pick all of the people up off of the carts you know what maybe they just haven't found actors for those koopa kids yet the koopa links yeah no koopa kids are Uh, koopa kids are different say is that uh barely any goombas in this movie because when it shows you the establishing shot of bowser's army uh, I, I thought the I thought the introductory shot to the inside of Bowser's castle is so good. Uh, it's like a rock concert or something. Yeah. And, and, it, and Bowser throws off the whole vibe when they find out that their boss is wanting to marry Peach. They're like, wait, what? Uh, they but there are barely li- any, <laughs> they just barely any let Goombas. In. Barely any Goombas in the movie. The only time you really see Goombas is in that shot. They show two Goombas when Bowser's like shouting out everyone in his army. Shouts out the Koopas, shouts out the Goombas, forgets the name of the Spikies. He says like whatever those things are. Yeah, the Spinies, uh, no. I thought Spinies had a single spike and Spikies had the multiple spikes. Nah, mm. the Spinies have multiple spikes and uh, the the one spike is actually the Beetle. The freaking no, Buzzy, Be- Buzzy, Buzzy Beetles but, but- don't have any spikes. Well, there's the ones that have the one spike, and then I don't know. Maybe they're called something else. <laughs> yeah, Mario Spiny. I, th- I think they're right like it, red with one spike. I'm looking it up something. right now. Not that it matters. Not that anyone watching this cares. Yeah, they're but, called uh, the ones in the movie were spinies. Yeah, spinies. Yes. The, the blue ones are buzzy beetles. What's the one with a single spike? A buzzy beetle with a spike. <laughs> Freaking. I mean, I spike top. I think that's what it's called. Spike top. Okay. Spike top. I didn't even know that. Okay. Credibility is saved. Uh, So I think the reason why my brother was theorizing this as well. I think the reason why there weren't many Goombas in the movie is because the only way to defeat a Goomba is by literally stomping on their head and crushing them. Yeah, yes. Bowser didn't want to hire. Which might have been a bit too violent. Whereas with a Koopa, you can hit them and then they go into their shell and then you can knock the shell around. Right. They could have easily gotten around that and just had the Goomba kind of squished, but not like uh, like completely squished or not dead. I think it's, <laughs> it's hilarious still- if that's the reason, because if Nintendo told them, hey, you can't crush a Goomba's head, that's too violent. Nintendo's the one that established that convention in the first place in their rated E games. So I imagine people at Illumination are like, what do you expect us to do? You create the convention of having to stomp Goomba's heads to defeat them, and then you say that's too violent for us to depict, so what do we have to do? We pretty much just have to make all the enemies Koopas. Um, <laughs> wow. That's- and uh, Mario pretty much immediately gets shown to Peach's castle by Toad, and yeah, even though to- this to- Toad, Toad is to- just called Toad, even though he's just called Toad, I'm assuming he's basically Captain Toad. Well, he's not, he's not Captain, Captain Toad, Toad yet. Right. Not, not yet, but he's sure. But, uh, honestly, that Toad could end up being Captain Toad in the future. Yeah, especially this, because of the backpack and him being, you know, definitely different from the other Toads in terms of him this, being uh, a little bit smarter, maybe. He's kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, at least a little bit uh, more brave than the other ones. And, oh, yeah. Uh, you know, obviously, there's that sort of platforming segment when he gets to the castle that was shown at the Game Awards. I'm thinking of the right spot. They oh, that yeah, scene. they did. They did show a clip of. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mario trying to trying to follow Toad. And, uh, I know Nintendo would never allow a direct reference to the Mario and Luigi franchise because they just let Alpha Dream go under without bailing them out at all. Oh, right. Uh, but seeing the town, seeing the uh, castle town as Mario was going through it, being led to the castle, that really made me think of Mario and Luigi because the only time I can think of an actual town of Toads is in Mario and Luigi, like in uh, Partners in Time 
or well, uh, yeah. Bowser's yeah. Inside Story. Paper Mario also. Oh, yeah, I guess Paper Mario had it. But specifically, the way everything was laid out, super compact, it was making me think of Mario and Luigi. So I think that's the closest we're ever going to get to a Mario and Luigi reference. The function, you see, because those are RPGs and like there's a place for having a town full of toads because that's like that's like that's right. potentially a bunch of NPCs to talk to. You know, that's why you see a bunch of toads uh running about a town in like Mario RPGs. Like you're talking to toads and junk. It's like uh you're not gonna see that in a bunch of platformers, like you just see a few toads, because you know, Miyamoto's like, oh well, we can't have this because it's gonna be a video yeah. game and things gonna well, function this way, you know. Yeah, there was and a they even had a store. at the beginning of Mario Galaxy, I think, with a bunch of toads, but that wasn't like that a was whole that city. was a, that was the friggin' like, that, you know. Yeah, that was like prologue. a courtyard. That wasn't an actual uh town. Yeah. I'm s i am got the sense that a town was nearby, a castle town was close. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. so when he gets into the castle, oh, when he gets into the castle, there's that really funny joke about the toad saying the princess is, is in another castle. Like, ha, I'm, ha, I'm sure we all, I'm sure everyone got that because it's literally like in your yes. face. Uh, I thought that was a really funny way to implement the joke, though. Toad had to freaking the, the the brave toad had to like <laughs> bust out the frying pan like, oh, he better, he better whoop them. Yeah, and and it's like, nah. Mario was buying it. Mario was buying it. He was like, oh, OK, I'll go check another castle. And Toad was like, no, they're messing with you, which I thought made Mario a funny audience surrogate for people who played Super Mario Bros. Because in Super Mario Bros., when you're playing the game and they say the princess is in another castle, you just have to accept it because you're playing the game and they take you to other levels. Right. So Mario was just accepting. it. Oh, OK. Uh. Which made him seem kind of like an audience surrogate to people that were forced to accept it when they were playing the games. Right. Uh, but then when he gets into the castle, Peach pretty much immediately accepts him as part of the team and trusts him completely without having to uh, vet him or anything, which might seem weird to some people. But I think the whole reason she did that is because it's, it's I got it's, the sense, you know, you might know what I'm talking about. I got the sense it was like Adventure Time, like a Princess Bubblegum Finn type relationship because uh, Princess Peach has been the only human or human like person in this whole place. And mm -hmm. she finally meets someone that's somewhat on the same intellectual level as her. That's because what she, she feels like. She's that's what she pointed out. Yeah. She feels like she's constantly babysitting all of these toads that would just get themselves killed otherwise. Right. And it okay. made me think of Princess Bubblegum and uh, the candy people. Right. I can and see that. Finn is the only human if uh, PB isn't a human right but she's like a human more so than the candy people and so I feel like that's why she hangs out with Finn a lot right because he's so much more uh, reliable if she needs him to go do things mm -hmm. that more more reliable than a uh, like cinnamon bun for example uh, uh, I guess Adventure I Time really <laughs> I guess Adventure Time really pulled from Mario right there <laughs> I'm thinking that uh, the Mario movie kind of pulled from Adventure Time because I don't think they've really depicted Peach and Mario like this. A lot of times, Peach and Mario rarely interact with each other. It's usually at the beginning of a game or at the end of a game, right? Uh, so I, I immediately realized it as that sort of relationship. She's tired of just having to babysit everyone she talks to, finally sort of an equal that she can talk to. Which I don't is think why she's uh, tired of it, but like she is intrigued by Mario because she's probably never seen like any other humans or human-like type of people. Yeah, and that's, yeah, just, so, and that's just due to her little backstory that she tells like this mark is <clears throat> that was that, that, that was like a little it's like a little later when mario's like how'd you even get here i, I think i think he asked that in the fire flower yeah field. so it's probably just an excuse to include the baby mario designs but we get a little bit of the backstory and oh. peach's peach's whole subplot is that she doesn't know where she came from, right? She doesn't even know if she's really a human or if she's from Earth, right? Then how and so does they, she know the word human? <laughs> they make it they make it sort of a uh, mystery subplot, right? And I thought that they were baiting Mario Galaxy stuff this whole time because around the same time she talks about her backstory, or the lack of, I should say, she literally looks up at space and says something like, there are a whole lot of galaxies out there. Hmm. You know, maybe I'm from Earth, maybe I'm not, implying that maybe I'm from another place with human-like people. Because right. there are a lot of galaxies out there looking up at space. And uh, also, when Luigi's in prison, there's a Luma. The Luma. So, 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 which so, is so funny. That Luma. <laughs> that Luma, I swear, man. I... <laughs> But but both it's both the personality of that Luma that got me, and also the also just the existence of a Luma, which is making me think, okay, there's 
Hmm, galaxies tying into this at some point, right? Uh. Yeah, so I really thought that they were going to kind of have galaxy stuff, uh, have Peach backstory segue into galaxy stuff, but they never go there. Uh, because, so I thought that her whole subplot was being set up to be sort of an existentialist thing, because getting ahead of myself, when the Bonsai Bill crashes into the warp zone, I thought that that was going to destroy warp zone. And with Warp Zone destroyed, Mario and Luigi wouldn't be able to get back home, but they would be okay with it. And that would make Peach accept that she's never going to figure out where she's from and she won't be able to ever go home. And it would sort of be the message of being like home is wherever you make it, right? I thought it was going to right. be that sort of message at the end. Uh, but they didn't do that because Warp Zone didn't get destroyed, but I'll get back to that later. And they just never, ever followed up Peach's backstory. The whole time they were saying, oh, Mario and Luigi were telling Peach that they would take her back to Brooklyn. Uh, but anyways... Uh, so the, the Luma is trapped in there with Luigi. Uh, my, in addition to me thinking that some of the scenes were overly cut out of the movie, my one critique would be that Luigi barely does anything in this movie. I agree. Because, um, obviously they were trying to avoid a damsel in distress cliche with Peach because they were probably expecting a lot of people would roll their eyes at that, complain about, uh, Peach being a damsel in distress if she were captured the whole time and it were Mario and Luigi trying to save her, right? So I like what they did with Peach. I don't think they girl bossed her too hard. I think it was a pretty uh, reasonable amount of girl bossing. But uh, in making Peach not a damsel in distress, they essentially just replaced the damsel in distress role with Luigi. You know? Right. And I think if the, if the roles were reversed, people would be complaining about having a pointless character way more. Because if Peach were the one in a cage the whole time, I think that would be a bit more apparent and people would complain about that. But with Luigi being in the cage the whole time, people are for some reason a bit more uh, forgiving of that. Even though I wish Luigi did a bit more. Maybe he like orchestrated some kind of escape. Maybe at the end well, when uh, Toad was handing them the ice flower, there could have been a scene of Luigi sort of organizing a breakout. Or maybe he could have been broken out sooner. Right? Well, this, is the, 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 this movie is also just like... It's like an origin story for the Super Mario Brothers, you know, because we're, we're we're because we're we're dealing with two plumbers from Brooklyn going to a mysterious world with things they've never seen before, and they're just learning how to be heroes and junk. Well, I guess mostly Mario, Luigi was more so learning to be a lot more brave and upstanding. I guess we get the team up at the end. I just wish it happened a little sooner, uh, but I guess you can sort of rationalize it in thinking, okay. If this movie was the game being played, if this movie were the game being played, I guess they were just playing it single player, right? Because if you play through <laughs> Super Mario Bros. single player, Luigi's just taking a backseat the whole time. Yay, that's a good way to tie <laughs> uh, it together. If it's two player, if it's two player and the first player is godlike, I guess Luigi's still like playing. <laughs> okay. I, I think guys, that they I'm, should have done something better with Luigi, though. Like, it, yeah. I hate to keep bringing up Paper Mario, but when Peach was captured, she was helping Mario out by, right. like, sending him messages and stuff like that and, and, like, little items, I think. So it's just, like, probably could have figured some way out to do that. Like, well, you Well, you know, at the end of it, Luigi won by doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> and uh, trying to move through this faster, I, I thought I was going to be the one that... Uh, goes Frick, on tangents freaking frick so, so, so all right so after that was the freaking uh training course right yeah you guys and are the ones trying to rope me into a three hour long video <laughs> oh 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 you're blaming me oh oh excuse me okay so, let's so yeah the training so, course uh so i thought the training course was a little weird because uh it uh when she introduces the power-ups by saying oh you know you need to use the power-up to do things in this world you get hit you lose it uh when he powers up with the mushroom it's a little deviant art-esque i don't know if you guys noticed that oh God. The, 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 the freaking sort of inflation looking nonsense yeah and so oh. i would just write it off as a coincidence if it weren't if it weren't immediately followed by essentially force feeding listen there was freaking balloon <laughs> mario in mario 64 ds okay that's right. way worse looking i'm just saying it's just it's the fact <laughs> that it's immediately followed by him getting force fed a mushroom that he doesn't want to eat and then that happens yep. uh and i was thinking is that implying that peach is already on a mushroom is she already powered on up? a mushroom she says this is you you need the power-ups to do this let me show you and then she does it easy peaser right and is it implying she was already on a mushroom? Because she never gets hit. So you don't know if she would power down by one hit point. We don't see small Peach at all. 
But I, I thought it was going to be a gag because she was making fun of Mario being short. But then you would find out later, oh, she's only that tall because she's on a mushroom. Because when Mario gets the mushroom, he gets roughly her height as well. So I was thinking, why were you making fun of his height if you knew he wasn't on a mushroom like you? Um, but he does the training course. Uh, licensed music ensues. Yes. Anything you guys want to say it's about like, that? It was like a big old montage of Mario. It's a montage of Mario learning how to be, you know, the Mario that we know. Uh, and, you know, he's doing his thing. He gets close. And then uh, he, he, he's, he's literally about to, to beat this course. He's like just stomping on the bullet bills. And then, you know, he chases down at Peach. And then freaking the, the, the mech piranha plant thing just freaking grabs yeah. him. <laughs> and he's just like close enough. Close enough, Someone yeah. took that course and made it in Mario Maker, and it is uh, so crazy accurate. I, I was going to I say it. it was kind of reminiscent Someone. of Mario Maker. Someone must have made it, yeah. She made it, she <laughs> essentially made a whole level out of these props, right? So that was sort of a Mario Maker homage, uh, learning the Kaizo tech. <laughs> and yeah. I, I like when Mario like fell in the water and had to deal with the cheap cheaps. Yes, yeah, so that's <laughs> And, yeah. and, then, and, then literally, and then literally later, it's like, all right, we're going on this adventure. So now we're walking out of the castle. All the toads, you know, they they don't the, the, all all the all the like like stranger toads don't exact, don't re, don't respect him as much as the princess, obviously. So <laughs> they're like not leaving him room to walk around. <laughs> and then yeah. you, and then you know, eventually they go through the pipe, and then the cra- and then the crazy frying pan toad joins them on the quest, and now they're walking through the the, the various lands. Mario gets gets face yeah, sucked so, uh, on by a freaking cheap we, cheap i already kind of talked about this a little bit but, yeah. but uh i was going out of order but basically i was talking about uh the the montage of them traveling so they go through it's a montage right and they go through what looks like dinosaur land because there's an apple and there are yoshis so yeah. i think they're implying in this continuity dinosaur land is a place in mushroom kingdom would you guys agree with that uh I, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that because they travel through all these places to get to Jungle Kingdom. So it right, could just be an in, in, in between. There, there, right, there was also a map after, they showed. And like, yeah, I, so I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure if Dinosaur Land was separate. They showed the map and I don't know what could have been in between as a separate island. And also after showing the montage of them going through Dinosaur Land, they're climbing this uh, these weird peaks. And at the top. Peach is asking Mario something like, "Mushroom Kingdom's pretty wild, isn't it?" Okay, implying so maybe that it every, is. And I think she said something like that, implying that everything in the montage was through Mushroom Kingdom, oh. just getting to the well, coast, I, would, I guess, so they could start heading towards Jungle Kingdom. Uh, That's the well, sense go, I, I got. Uh, yeah, those those rock structures, I believe, is a reference to uh, New Super Mario Brothers, the first one. I think it's like World Seven. Yeah, or something? I think so as well. Yeah, because that's the only uh, place I remember that being. Uh, there. Yeah, above the clouds. Yeah, well, the rocks. And so they get there. We, we already talked about the uh, the scene in which they get driven to the Jungle Kingdom castle. What song was it again? Take, Take on me. On yeah. me. Well, I mean, we didn't uh, mention the freaking we didn't mention the freaking Kong at the gate. That dude looked I, pretty cool. <laughs> I really wish that guy was cool. So I'm not too mad about it. But I wish that it was Funky Kong that ferried them there with the plane. Wow, that would have oh, been sick. Oh, yeah, that would have been cool. And I think that they must have considered that, but they, maybe they thought that storyboarding a scene with a car would be more interesting than just flying through the sky. Yeah, and it's, it's like the whole Kong Island. It's like they have, like, roads and junk. Like, everyone's driving yeah. in a cart, which, uh, you, you know, that gets... And uh, big, maybe deliberately designed roads because... There are so many cases where it looked as if it was just going to fall off because it barely fit on the road. So maybe that was designed to be a road there. Uh, but yeah, I kind of wish that was Funky Kong because Funky Kong was in the trailer. In the trailer showing all the carts, you could see Funky Kong in the background. Again, it's kind of like the Yoshi situation. Seeing a little bit of Funky Kong made you think, oh, Funky Kong is going to show up in the movie. Can't wait to see him. But when he shows up in the movie, it's the same exact footage from the trailer. He's just a background character. I didn't so, see him in the trailer. That's cool. He, he's in one of the cars in the background. Oh, uh, uh, you, you had to like you had to like really look for him. Also, when they were showing the garage, I think one of the characters looked like Kitty Kong, but I'm not super sure about that one because Kitty Kong's character design isn't as good or recognizable as a lot of the other Kongs. So I might be um, making a stretch on that one. I just wanted to ask the question if that was Kitty Kong. If I'm thinking of the right character, the one from Donkey I, Kong Country Three. I saw Chunky Kong in the stands. I didn't see Kitty, but he okay. might be there. Because Kitty uh, is Chunky's brother. 
little brother. <laughs> And uh, okay, so since we're talking about the Kongs, let me get to the fight with Donkey Kong, right? <laughs> well, so. well, 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 before, well, before that, wow, freaking Cranky Kong, King of the Kongs. Yeah, I, I, I mean, so, I mean, has that has that always been a thing? Or? The, the Donkey Kong. <laughs> Someone hasn't seen every episode of the Donkey Kong Country CG show. Oh, excuse show. me. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> yeah, sit down and watch boss. all that dang CGI Donkey Kong. Excuse they're, me. <laughs> they're all on Amazon Prime now for anyone that wants to subject themselves to that. I'm going to get uh, started yeah, right that, away. I don't know, that, man. I, I think, think I got better things to do. They were having know, to man. essentially base it on that show since that's the closest <laughs> thing they have as a reference. Yeah, Cranky Kong is basically the chieftain of the Kongs in that show. And uh, what do you guys think about his voice? Because I think that the Cranky Kong voice is the one voice I wasn't entirely sold on. I think it sounded a little too tryhard, maybe I, a little, I a did, little nasal. I did not. I did not expect it. I did. I, know, I, I did. Uh, I didn't expect. I didn't expect a Cranky Kong of that demeanor. You know. Uh, I I know it's a, a, my voice sounds kind of nasal, so I know I'm one to talk. But I thought the Cranky Kong voice sounded maybe a little too nasal, maybe trying a little bit too hard. But maybe I'm just used to the voice from the DKC show. Um, Cranky Kong, I, I don't know, did, did Cranky Kong, like, always come off as kind of smug and whatever? Cranky Kong is much meaner in the Donkey Kong Country show. He's yeah. so mean to Donkey uh, Kong. Oh, 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 very DK show. He's kind of condescending in the games, too, because he's always, like, telling you, yeah, oh, I would have done this tutorials. better. And there's, like, secrets and hints that you don't know about and all that stuff. I, I like the direction they took with the character in the movie. Instead of him just being a cranky old guy, he actually seemed like... He wasn't worrying about much because he's the boss and he's old, so he's going to die soon anyway. So why does he need to worry? Uh, because he kind of implied that he was passing things off to Donkey Kong, right? Which is also in the Donkey Kong Country show. He's the successor. Donkey Kong, he's constantly harking on Donkey Kong because Don Donkey Kong is supposed to inherit the leadership role. So he says, you beat Donkey Kong, I'll let you use my army because obviously the Toads aren't going to cut it, but the Kongs might. So... Going back to the Kongs that are present in the audience, Diddy Kong and Dixie Kong are there. Yeah, yes. very much so. Also, I think it's kind of weird that Diddy Kong's eyes are separated. Oh, even though the, <laughs> Donkey Kong or Diddy Kong has separated eyes, even though the Koopas don't have separated eyes. I guess I guess Diddy got hit with the same sort of redesign treatment Donkey Kong did because they said that they pretty much fused donkey kong's modern and classic designs together for this movie were donkey kong's eyes separated i don't know why i didn't in, 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 the, cla were. in the classic games uh pretty sure no yeah. i mean in the movie in the movie were his eyes separated uh yeah they're separated yeah oh for for some reason that one didn't freak me out but when i saw diddy kong it freaked me out seeing his eyes separated well, uh, Don donkey kong's eyes are separated in general I mean, I'm, I'm looking at pictures right now of Donkey Kong from the games and the eyes are separate. Everyone draw Donkey Kong from memory now. <laughs> mm, I can't draw, man. You're going to see some wacky nonsense if a, I draw. a drawing video. We all just draw no, Mario characters from memory. No. Uh, oh, well, some, sometimes his eyes... Yeah, I guess his eyes technically are separated. They're really close, though. In some renders, though, his eyes are sort of touching, but you can still see that they're two distinct eyeballs. So, yeah, I guess that's why it didn't seem so weird seeing his eyes separated. But Diddy Kong's eyes are usually always together, right? Uh, yes. And yeah. so maybe it was the case of them thinking it makes no sense to have the eyes together. Let's just separate them for the movie. But they didn't do that for the Koopas, which is the weird part. And I think that's why it weirded me out. But either way, I'm still happy to see Diddy Kong there. I was not expecting uh, Dixie. I was sort of expecting Diddy, but not Dixie at all. They put, I, they put like nearly all the Kongs, unless they put like all the Kongs. Like, uh, maybe Candy Kong was there. I, I didn't Bluster notice her. Bluster Kong? Yeah, there's no Candy Kong. I didn't see her. Maybe she was in the background. I was hoping for a Bluster Kong, but I don't think they had the rights to that because he's an original character for the show. Did they have so that, Swanky Kong? Uh. Oh, so you know who Swanky is, Kong is, right? The game, game, game show. Game show. Yeah, the game show. This host. is why I'm thinking getting the Blu ray would be worth it because there are so many cases in which you'd want to pause yeah, and look like, at the background. Yeah, this movie moves pretty fast and they, they threw a lot of things in the background. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, no Bluster Kong, but that's probably for the best <laughs> if uh, anyone's familiar with Bluster Kong. Uh, also, during the fight with DK, they sort of broke a rule. Uh, so he hits a mystery block because, you know, Cranky Kong set up the mystery blocks to handicap the fight a little bit to make it somewhat more even, a little bit more uh, entertaining of a fight. He hits a mystery block from the top and the power-up comes out from the top instead of the bottom. Uh, the power-ups come up from the top. That's how the blocks work. 
Not if you hit the top. Oh. Um, he, like, oh. he pounded it from the top, and instead okay. of the power up falling out, it came the out from only, the top. So I think the only way how they would come from the top if you hit it from the top is if the block was on the ground. <laughs> Otherwise... Right. Oh. But it wasn't. Yeah, but they were floating it wasn't, in the air. It wasn't. It wasn't. So uh, getting my nerd emoji on for a moment. <laughs> Immersion totally broken at that part well, of the movie. Well, hey, you know what? They they, gotta, they, 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 got, they just got to roll with it, I guess. Also, another rule that they broke in that fight is that he gets the mini mushroom power up. And normally in New Super Mario Bros, where the mini mushroom debuted, if you get hit with the mini mushroom, you still have one hit point. So you just insta die with the mini yeah. mushroom. You don't you don't go back to regular Mario. They they they, uh, they definitely had to they definitely had to change the rule here. <laughs> right. Uh also I'm surprised they never did a poison mushroom gag. Oh uh, because they did. I well, because they didn't... The, well the mini mushroom uh was way earlier, right? Uh and so it kind of comes back in the DK fight. Mm-hmm. And I thought they, just to get more power-ups into the movie, instead of reusing the mini mushroom, they would have done a poison mushroom, right? Like, maybe he sees, oh, cool, a, a mushroom, he eats it, but Donkey Kong notices its eyes are slightly angry or something, and he's like, oh, no, don't eat that. Oh, God. Are you sorry? But he you eats suggest it anyway, they put and then he the, gets sick or something. I think they could have had someone get sick from a poison mushroom. You're suggesting well, the, they would have put the um, the Smash Brothers version of the poison mushroom in. <laughs> yeah, I, would, I was assuming they would have to because, you know, the poison mushroom is from Lost Levels, and Lost Levels doesn't really have much of a unique visual identity, right? Yeah. Uh, I think they'd have to base it on a Smash Bros. thing. Uh, but it gets the Cat Mario power-up, more stuff from the Wii U era, and uh, yeah, the, 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 scratches that, him up. That definitely that, that, that definitely looked cool. Mario was, like, scratching his face and crawling all over him. <laughs> I thought it was really funny after he beats him and he's standing on top of DK and he's talking to the people up there. He's, like, subconsciously kneading on DK's yeah, body without he's realizing He's making it. biscuits. <laughs> he's making biscuits on yeah. Donkey Kong. <laughs> Like, this power-up has some kind of influence on his psychology without him realizing the extent of it. Uh, yeah, it was a pretty uh, well-animated fight throughout. Like, the yeah. beginning, like, Donkey Kong's, like, wailing on Mario like crazy. Yeah, and, uh, they and, 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 then, like, and then, like, he freaking charges up the super punch and just, wham, like, right in the yeah. sky. There he goes, and Mario's like, oh, and Peach is like, oh, the block, you know. And uh, I like how... They sort of establish Donkey Kong as sort of a blowhard, right? Because Donkey Kong would beat Mario, but because Cranky Kong handicapped the fight, and because Donkey Kong was kind of showing off the whole time, that's why he lost. Uh, yeah. And so then he has to give them the army, right? So they go to the garage, which is a really cool scene. And they have, like, they have this... Uh, menu to select the car parts which is the like mario kart 7 mario kart 7 and mario kart yeah. 8 that's so it's crazy exactly the man same. it's the so kongs cool. the kongs built the carts man why isn't it called donkey kart then huh <laughs> I actually thought that later, once his cart breaks and they're riding on that turbine barrel that was kind of reminiscent of dk barrel blast Mm. Am I thinking could, of the right be, game on the could, Wii? Could, could be a subtle nod. That, that's the the racing one, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Which is a pretty obscure one. Yeah, I think I think DK rides a rocket barrel in like Tropical Freeze as well. Right. I yeah, guess. it's not specifically Barrel Blast, but just the fact that it was coming off of the racing part, it was making me think it was sort of reminiscent. I doubt they were specifically thinking of that though. Yeah, the Kongs felt very technological compared to what I expected. Like, I kind of uh, liked I expected it. I liked to see more minecarts and like caves and stuff like that or, or donkey kong island with the giant head in the background but no we didn't even get to see any of that they're yeah, they're, they're, so, civ they're civilizations like advanced it's crazy yeah correct me if i'm wrong but basically the plot at this point is mushroom kingdom knows bowser is about to attack mushroom kingdom so peach thinks well if we know where they're going to attack how about we take this uh this flanking route so that way we can flank them and hit them when they're about to show up to Mushroom Kingdom, right? So they're going to go around and intercept them as they're heading to Mushroom Kingdom, right? With the carts. But Bowser gets word of it, and so he ambushes their ambush, right? That's the full extent of what's going on here when they go on Rainbow Road. Yeah, I believe so. Okay. And uh, I think it's kind of cool that they made Blue Shell into an actual character. Man, that was that was crazy. <laughs> because it makes sense if a blue shell exists in this universe, it must. Because you never from a see, Koopa. you never see yeah. the actual Koopa. You know, you always see the blue shell. You never see the actual Koopa, who the shell belongs to. You know. 
Also, more Wii U stuff because the anti gravity stuff kicks yeah. in with the carts when they go upside down. Well, uh, oh, I mean, you know, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is like the best song Mario Kart ever, so of course everyone's gonna know that. Yeah, crap. Like 50 million copies or something like that. Sheesh. Uh, and uh, again, talking about Bowser saying he's going to kill Mario, when uh, the blue shell Koopa thinks that he crushes Mario and he's cheering. That is literally what his reaction would be if Mario got killed there, right? That's literally how he would react. <laughs> well, that's that, that that's his thing, man. He's he's literally he's literally on the side of Bowser, evil and junk. It's, so basically, all the carts get broken, right? DK and Mario fall and get eaten by the eel, and that's when the like I said earlier, the Koopa Clown carts uh, pick up and abduct all the other survivors, right? Also, I kind of like how when uh, Rainbow Ro Road was breaking and they were falling in the water, it looked amazing because there were pieces of Rainbow Road that were like physically yeah. falling in the water and the lighting in the water looked really yeah, good. Yeah, they were all glowy. <laughs> yeah, and so we get the eel scene. I really like the dynamic between Mario and DK. because They both, they, they, they both had fathers that, uh, yeah. you know, they, they, they think less of them, essentially. Uh, Something like oh, yeah, that. I forgot to mention earlier. During the fight, they actually wrote in a spot for the Seth Rogen laugh. The <laughs> they, literally, they literally just told him to do it. Uh, but I really like how uh, Mario and DK have a sort of rivalry with each other. Because obviously with Bowser being the villain, you couldn't make DK the villain, right? But it still sort of pays homage to the fact that DK was originally a villain in his debut game, Donkey Kong, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So him being... Uh, sort of a rival that just antagonizes Mario, but isn't actually the antagonist, I think is the perfect dynamic for them. And again, as I was saying before, I think that the eel scene could have been maybe like 30 seconds longer because you started to get a little bit of a character building, but then immediately it gets interrupted by them saying, oh, look at that engine turbine. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yep. And they leave, right? Yeah, I mean, that was just coming, that was just coming off of like, Donkey Kong just saying like, like, like you know, he's more than some dude who smashes things and junk. Because that's all yeah. cranky. That's all cranky wants them to do is like smash things. And it's like yeah, no, I'm not, I'm more than that. I'm not asking for them to derail the movie. I'm just thinking like maybe just a few extra lines of dialogue, maybe just thirty extra seconds. There uh, would have, well, uh, you know, there's, made, there's, made there's, the movie better because the movie's only a, an hour thirty minutes long. They have plenty of time, and I, you know, every movie gets scenes cut by the time it reaches theaters. So I'm sure they had extra stuff in there that they cut out. I'm hoping maybe they release like a director's cut eventually. There's, um, there's, there's probably more on the Blu-ray, I'm sure. Yeah. And so that's, so they break out and they're using the uh, turbine barrel to essentially uh, save everyone that just got abducted, right? Yeah. And so this is basically the final act. And so... Uh, so so this is when uh Peach and Toad they make it back to the Mushroom Kingdom, they're evacuating the toads. Uh man, so many toads. Oh, yeah. so many yeah, toads they, on screen. They make it back. Uh, the other people get abducted, but they make it back, right? But then Bowser gets there and abducts them anyway. Well Bowser, he basically he, he pulls a shin from Fist of the North Star and he asks Peach to marry him. She says no. And he says, Well, you know, I'll kill all the toads if you don't marry me. I'm not forcing you. It's going to be your choice. And then she says, yes. Yeah. So he tells everyone, look, she chose to marry me. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Fist of uh, the North Star. Such a good foundation for a Shin, relationship. So in, in Fist of the North Star, uh, Shin steals the main character's wife by threatening to kill Ken in front of his wife. And he says, I'm not forcing you to marry me, uh, but I'll kill him. I'll, it's your yeah. choice. Like, just say the word. Just say you love me. And then I'll stop killing your fiance. And so she agrees to it. And then Shin's like, ha ha ha. Isn't that so funny how quickly women can change their mind? Shin's a pretty funny villain. Uh, <laughs> you, oh, man. I, I encourage everyone to watch Fist of the North Star. I think I just have that on my mind because uh, of me playing the, the fitness, fitness boxing game. The yeah. Fist, the fitness boxing yeah, but, ba but Bowser literally pulls a shin, which I thought was hilarious because I recently rewatched re the Fist of the North Star movie because I've been hyped up on the game. So I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, so you basically have these two uh, parallel scenes happening in the climax with... Uh, we have Bowser Peach and Toad. Yeah, Peach and Toad trying to break out of the wedding and Mario and DK are trying to get there. Right. And a bunch more cameos of bosses showing up at uh, Bowser's wedding. There's King bob -omb Yeah. And King King Boo. Yeah. And there's a big piranha plant, which I'm thinking was maybe supposed to be Petey Piranha. Even that, was though it not, wasn't. that was not Petey Piranha. Yeah, because it was they should have just made it Petey Piranha because they could have just added the flower petals. Right. Maybe they're saving Petey for later. <laughs> Who knows? 
Maybe, uh, but I thought that was another good set of cameos. And I like how King Babam is just kind of senile. Like he's just falling asleep, not even realizing that there's the uh, shell <laughs> bouncing by him. Because later when his, uh, when oh, his yeah. uh, wick gets lit, he doesn't realize that he has to wake up. The shell, uh, the shell was literally functioning as it should. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and so I like to imagine that Bowser just kind of forced all of these other bosses to show up and they're just there because they have to. So, uh, De so that's when I said it's weird that Toad was able to bring in an ice flower. Yeah, to Peach yeah, we, yeah, we don't know because where you don't, you don't know how he got that. That could have been a cool scene. Yeah, yeah they didn't, it, they it didn't feels like an entire him? scene was check cut. Toad, like what, what's going on here? It feels like an entire scene was cut there. Uh, and these ice flowers are behave are behaving as they do in New Super Mario Bros. Wii, not in Mario Galaxy, right? Because in Mario Galaxy, it turns your whole body to ice, and you're able to skate on water. Yeah, Whereas in was... New Super Mario Bros. Wii, it's basically the fire flower, but you're throwing ice. Um, and so Bowser, it, they they add a time limit. They add some stakes to this scene because he's lowering everyone into the lava, including Luigi and the Luma and uh cranky kong and all of them into the lava as the wedding is happening and she uses the ice flower to freeze the uh chain right which buys mario and dk some time and as mario and dk are trying to get here they get fire flowers and correct me if i'm wrong but i think this is the first time there has ever been a fire flower design for dk this that is correct there's never been I a fire so. yeah, donkey he's, kong he's red and he has a little bit of white hair on the top and now uh, I, and now i want donkey kong in a new super mario brothers game i mean I know. come on yeah it, it feels like they could do <laughs> that freaking, now. For, for throw some question throw some question mark blocks into a new donkey kong country game let's spice it up <laughs> uh peach takes on a fire flower form earlier in the movie and i initially when i saw the trailers thought that was new but no, it's actually was, not because that's from the wii u one that's that's 3d world right yeah that's 3D i never world. played i never played 3d world that's why really? i didn't recognize it at first man I pretty, gotta... much, I pretty much only used my wii u to play xenoblade chronicles x and smash bros friggin and my fast racing my... Yeah, my brother had the Wii U in 3D World, and that's how I played it at first. And now I have it on Switch. And yeah, I wanted to get it on Switch, but I don't. I don't really want to pay full price for a port of a Wii U game. So that's fair. You can play it used, online. You could play I'd it rather, online. Uh, yeah, with no, that Nintendo I'm, online. I'm boycotting, I'm boycotting <laughs> Nintendo online, so I can't do that. So I thought I'll just buy a used copy on the Wii U. But then the, I'd have to pull the Bowser's out my Wii U. Fury portion was honestly like really good, though. That yeah, that honestly looks really cool. That's, it's really uh, good. And when Bowser was breathing fire at the first scene with the uh, penguins, it was looking kind of reminiscent of that. Obviously not really a direct reference, but I'm thinking they were using Bowser's fury to get some inspiration for the visual direction of how the fire looks when he breathes the fire out and whatnot. Uh, so they get it. How does he get the Tanuki suit again? He gets the Tanuki suit to save them from the lava. Uh, yeah, Mario, Mario hit a bit because, th because there was the whole scene of Mario and Donkey Kong and it's, it's another 2D camera thing. Yeah. And uh, Mario does get, uh, I think Mario got hit or he, no, I don't think he got hit, but um, he did hit another, he did hit another question mark block uh, somewhere. Okay, he's like, he's like so traveling he literally, somewhere. He literally just finds it then. Yeah. And then it starts yeah. the Super Mario Bros. 3 music. And uh, DK asks why he's a raccoon, which is funny because that was actually the full on Tanuki suit, not the raccoon suit. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. They, yeah. So, so, yeah. Yeah. And like uh, in like 3D land, like uh, pretty I'm pretty sure like like he just gets a full on Tanuki suit from the leaf. Yeah, and then, because and, raccoon Mario is just the ears and the tail. But yes, Tanuki suit is the full thing. So uh, DK yes. needs to check his uh, lore there. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's something because Mario three the leaf was the ears and tail, and then like yeah, okay. the uh, I wanted to make sure I got that right because the, my channel is literally named after uh, the yeah. like, the whole reason I put Tanuki in the name was because of the Tanuki suit for Mario, so I wanted to make sure I yeah the got Tanuki that right. suit the, the you you pretty much like got the striped Tanuki suit out of a block in Mario three, and then like yeah. and then like Mario three D Land like in like the post game other worlds like you got like a. Uh, I forgot what it looked like. It was just like uh, I, I think it was like a bell or something. I forget, but you were like in Tanuki Suit Mario with a scarf, and that's I how you got the, the statue power. The, yeah, you're thinking the, of Super Mario 3D Land. You're able yeah. to turn into a statue. Uh, the the bell is the cat Mario. Oh, that's for the cat suit. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so he shoots the bonsai bill 
at him as he's in the Tanuki suit. Uh well, and, that, well, 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 initially, initially, that's uh, it, Bowser, Bowser, Bowser aimed that at the castle, but then Mario, oh yeah, yeah, you're he, right. Mar- yeah, Mario so yeah, used yeah, yeah. Mario used the Tanuki suit to yeah, to try and stop the banana, the, the band's eye bell. Yeah. And uh, direct he, it like all over the dang place until eventually. Yeah, he, he drew the aggro and it was sort of like a dogfight scene because he leads it to warp zone. I don't know what he was specifically planning when he led it to warp zone. I think he was specifically just wanting it to get teleported somewhere. He yeah. well, 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 when he when he was in the warp pipe, like it was like an endless void, right? So he figured, okay, it must be the safest way to get rid of this thing without blowing up the kingdom uh, but i would know. have considered the very real possibility that would have that it would have been sent directly back to brooklyn and <laughs> killed people there <laughs> uh, but instead it yeah. just floats it just floats in this uh interdimensional space and then explodes for some reason yeah <laughs> and maybe it was on some kind of time limit uh i thought they were going to pull a cars from jojo's he just floats for infinity and he just eventually stops thinking <laughs> That's terrifying. <laughs> you've seen you've seen JoJo's, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah okay. I, I wanted I wanted to make sure someone knew what I was talking about there. Uh, so I thought, like I said before, I thought the bonsai bill was going to destroy the warp zone, and so then after the fight with Bowser, Mario and Luigi would be stuck there, but they would accept it and they'd be okay with it, right? And that would uh, teach Peach to learn that she doesn't really need to be hung up on her origins, right? When it's more so like they could have done the you know very uh, tried thematic trope of it's not about where you're from it's what you're doing right that sort of thing yeah but instead it literally uh explodes the warp zone and instead of shutting it off it basically like opens up the portal bigger and they all get sucked in right i did not expect that to happen (laughs) yeah and so uh they go to brooklyn and this is actually pretty similar to an episode from the super mario bros super show because there's an episode where bowser learns how to get to brooklyn and he literally goes to brooklyn and they fight in brooklyn oh what the heck yeah. i didn't know that <laughs> but he, he learns he learns about how they how super mario bros got there from the warp zone and so he wants to go there to take over it's a really weird episode that show is not good at all <laughs> uh, that episode not being an exception but i thought it was kind of reminiscent of that and surely they must have watched these things not necessarily to reference but to get some kind of uh inspiration from right i i have to imagine so especially when because they that, when they've incorporated brooklyn you know yeah, because if you're going to write a scene about bowser going to brooklyn the only other thing you have to base it on is the episode where bowser goes to brooklyn in super mario bros super show i think it's kind of weird that when bowser and his gang get there they're not freaked out you'd figure when yeah, bowser gets they, there he'd be like whoa where am i a whole new place to conquer this is even better than mushroom kingdom haha ha. no but right? he's just he's just but, focused on beating up mario yeah so i'm thinking it's probably it's possible he's just blinded by rage and doesn't care but yeah. i'm thinking it might also be due to Maybe everybody that lived in the Mushroom Kingdom dimension was already kind of used to weird abstract things, and they're already used to fast traveling around the place. Maybe they already go to other dimensions as well, so this was just one of many, right? Like, if you're used to going to all these different dimensions and you randomly get put on one, even if it's one you've never been to before, you're not going to immediately point out the novelty of how weird it is if you're used to going to new dimensions all the time anyway, right? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... For, so, so this is so this is the part of the movie where it's like, uh, yeah, Bowser like Bowser's in in, in freaking Brooklyn like he's smashing cars trying to thrash Mario about, uh, I don't know, he like he eventually he eventually like like knocks Mario into the freaking pizzeria and this is like yeah th- 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 this is where we get a moment where Mario is like he feels defeated and this is like very like. This is very like like contrary to like what, what to, to what Mario is typically portrayed as, which is just like the pristine, you know, perfect yeah, he has, hero he guy. Had a, sort of a character arc. Yeah, it's like it's 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 like it's like this is like this is a moment where you realize like yeah, he's human. He's a human dude. He's he's up against the dang big strong turtle dragon guy, uh, and he's like about to terrorize the town and murder everyone or something. Uh, yeah so during that part he's looking at his commercial on the tv and for some reason i didn't notice it before but i noticed it then which is why i'm thinking of it now in the commercial they have the capes 
Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, they do. The feather, <laughs> the cape, the feather cape from capes. Mario World. Yeah, the feather cape from Super Mario World. For some reason, I didn't catch that the first time they showed the commercial, even though it's clearly in it, right? Is it? I'm assuming it's, it has to be because it was the same commercial, but I didn't notice it until I saw the commercial when he looked at it in the restaurant when he got knocked in there. Man, I, 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 I think the capes were at the beginning of the movie, too. I think maybe it's because I saw the trailer with the commercial already. And so when I saw it again in the movie, my brain knew I had seen it already. So I was paying less attention, maybe. Oh, man. It's like, (laughs) yeah, I just, I, 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 I just, I just didn't like, I thought, I thought like with the capes, like that's like, that's the only place to show up. I guess maybe it was the beginning. But my, my, my goodness, again, it's like, I saw it once and a lot of things were moving pretty quick. Oh, yeah, and just, so uh, I was kind of hoping for Pauline to show up again, but uh, she was nowhere to be seen, which is fine. She's probably hiding, obviously. Yeah, uh, so they basically have a fight in the streets of Brooklyn, right? And they're fighting over the Power Star, mm-hmm. right? The and, Superstar? Yeah, and at, the at this superstar. point, yeah, okay, the star. <laughs> uh, at this point, Luigi's free, so he's able to actually team up with him and help. I wish it happened earlier, right? Well, but the, finally, well, Luigi well, gets to do something. Well, yeah, because because now Luigi has mustered up uh, uh, some courage to actually step in and do something. You know, yeah, it's it's, and, it's like uh, it's like it's like in one of the previous uh, prison scenes, he was also. Well, not prison. Like he was on the um the hot air balloon being taken over to the prison. There was like a flashback of him as baby Luigi and yeah. then getting I bullied to show the baby and, character uh, designs. Friggin' here comes baby Mario saving him and junk and Luigi's just Luigi's probably thinking to himself like, man, I'm just I'm just not brave, man. I'm just God. Yeah. So uh, yeah, Luigi had that character arc, and they get the power, the superstar, whatever it's called. They get the star. And when they get the star, I thought it was very similar to the final fight in Sonic. When Sonic goes to Super Sonic. <laughs> I was thinking like, the exact same the, thing. The same sort of stare down in the street. And they're basically going like invincible mode fighting uh, the villain, right? Back on the hero's home turf. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there was probably some inspiration there. I'm sure they studied the Sonic movie quite a bit when they made this movie. Just looking at, an, at another recent example of a successful uh, adaptation of a game movie, right? Oh, uh, I mean, I, I mean, I get I mean, pretty much when you put the freaking power star at the end, it's like you, you, you kind of know what to expect. Like they're going to grab it, be invincible and freaking run towards them, which, by the way, they were running towards them kind of like how. When Mario grabs a uh, uh, like a rainbow star in Galaxy, or like yeah, yeah, you're or, right. Or, yeah, or, or, I, was, or, I forgot like, to point that out. Or, or, or like just I think like even like Mario World or Mario Three, something like that. Yeah, when they just or, hold or even their arms new Super out. Mario Brothers, like they have their arms out yeah. running. Yeah, yeah, yeah I forgot just, to point that out. They're just and then um, and yeah, they're just like doing their thing, just wailing on everyone. See, I thought it was weird that Bowser just didn't use the star here because at this point he just seemed like he well, was entirely focused on revenge against Mario and you think he would have used it. But I'm guessing he was still trying to hold out hope that he would win without it so that way he could use it afterwards to go back to Mushroom Kingdom and rule with it yeah, well, as like thanks. a long term power source instead of just a power up that goes away. Right. Or he just felt cocky and was just like, I have the power and just like using it as a threat more than anything maybe uh but well, then they just I'm, absolutely go to town on him and i think it was kind of like smash bros because yeah. some of the moves some of the moves looked like smash bros because the only kind of frame of reference you have for mario punching someone is with smash because for example when uh he punches him in the air he kind of still rotates after punching and it kind of felt like it's, mario's forward air yeah mm-hmm. right yeah it's yeah fair. uh also, them t- him teaming up with Luigi, again, not a direct reference because I don't think Nintendo ever wants to acknowledge Mario and Luigi, but it felt like Mario Mario and Luigi, right? Because in Mario and Luigi, you have a lot of team up moves. I was just of the characters. The the whole time I was just waiting for the tail swing, and yes, it happened. I yeah. mean I was just I'm I'm waiting like I think they swing Bowser by the tail. Yes, they did. Yeah, I mean, but they didn't say they didn't say Solange Bowser, but they still swung him. I wasn't <laughs> expected to say Solange Bowser. Really. They could they could have at least said like Solong or no. just without the heavy accent. No, but they just spun him. Uh, and the whole thing with Luigi at that point, like he was 
incredibly brave and capable and doing all these crazy moves. And I'm like, this doesn't feel right, except for the fact that like they were saying the whole time, oh, as long as I'm with my brother, I could do anything. We could do anything together. So I'm like, yeah, maybe he just felt that extra confidence from Mario and was following his lead or something. Yeah, I mean, ba- the movie yeah is, basically. <clears throat> the movie is called Super Mario Brothers, so they kind of have to make that the whole, the main dynamic, right? Even with other characters like Peach and DK, etc. Yeah, obviously. Uh, it's, also, it's, it's, I forgot to point this out, but uh, <laughs> when they came back to Brooklyn, there was a manhole cover that they shot out of or something. And on the manhole cover, there were three X's and then a space and then four X's. I don't know if that was supposed to be a reference to something. I couldn't say. I couldn't uh, say. That, it, it, that better not be a reference. I, I know my brain is already in this mode because I've been watching the Mega Man Battle, Battle Network anime. And there was one spot where they had to like figure out a number for something. And it was 34. And I thought, oh, haha, that's funny. Right. Rule 34. But then the next number they had to figure out was 63. And that seemed like, OK, that's not a coincidence because they're both rule 34 and rule 63 are like Internet rules. So why would they go from 34 to 63? That's a weird coincidence, right? And now I see a manhole cover with three X's and three fours, and I think, is that another, is that a reference to Mario Rule 34? I don't uh, know, man. Why are you bringing this up? <laughs> and, uh, like some weird meta references, like maybe the movie feeling so rushed is a reference, is a shout out to the speedrun community. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, come maybe, on. You, have, you got some wild scenes. theories, man. You got some... <laughs> I'm just saying, everything in this movie seems so deliberate. When I see a very clear shot on a manhole cover with X's that have like a very deliberate space in a certain spot, I think it must be something, right? Uh, but maybe... I, I, do, I did notice in the background of that part, there was a, a sign that had like a balloon fight character on it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I don't think yeah, I caught so much that. much stuff in the background. Wow. Um... Uh, and so they beat Bowser. Um, how do they get rid of him? Oh, yeah, they shrink him. Yes, they use a mini mushroom and shrink him, put him in a jar. Yeah, and for, but what's, yeah, they have to put him in a jar of all things. And, and that's like, and that's uh, like, the, and, and, and like uh, Mario said somewhere in an earlier scene, like he'd, he'd get Peach a pet turtle from his world. And hey, yeah. well, you know, it happened. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and for some reason, they somehow make him or buy him a little mini piano. Put it in the cage okay we haven't talked about freaking okay. bowser's okay. musical scenes at all oh my god okay. yeah um oh my god I, I feel like they knew they had jack black so they probably just let him do whatever apparently apparently the peaches song is like uh what it's it's like oscar worthy apparently or Emmy worthy. I, I think I, th- I think I like the the idea of it being nominated, but that would be so dumb if it actually wins anything because the whole point is that it was a bad song. The whole point bro, is that bro, Bowser I wasn't able it. to think of good lyrics. <laughs> I loved it actually. The, the, the whole point is that he's so like bad at songwriting. Oh my god, Jack! I swear, man, Jack Black really, really put put in his all with Bowser. It's crazy because yeah, I said that, that, because I said earlier like. Like, Chris Pratt's performance as Mario didn't really stick out too much for me, but I think Jack Black may have stole the show here. Like, the musical yeah, performance is just, like... the best part. It's like, it's like, it's like man, this this is all the, like, oh, I'm gonna marry Peach. Oh, I'm so jealous of Mario. I gotta marry Peach. I, the superstar is gonna bring us also, together. We're gonna uh, rule the freaking world. To mention, so- I forgot to mention this earlier, but I think it's hilarious that the whole reason there's a conflict between Bowser and Mario in this movie is because Luigi refused to not wingman for his brother because bowser asked luigi do princesses find him attractive and luigi could have just said no and it all could have been a (laughs) non-issue but he had to say yes so i thought that was hilarious that's the whole reason why get beef with mario just because luigi had to say yes to that bowser bowser was just fueled by jealousy (laughs) i loved how furious he looked when he was frozen in ice after peach froze him and then he saw mario and peach close together and he just looked so like he was gonna burst you know like with complete anger and rage i thought the ice only bought a little bit of time because i think that would have been a little too girl bossy if she just solved everything by shooting everything with the ice flower that she mysteriously got from toad Mm mm-hmm it's it's all integral too because this is like 
as I said earlier, it's like they, this is like an origin story, basically. Right. So ba- Bowser is it's like it's like we're now seeing like why Bowser would hate Mario all the time. It's because. Yeah. So I'll actually segue that into talking about some sequel stuff. But before that, a couple things I still want to point out. Hmm. The dad, I think, is still awful because after the dad saw Mario beat up this monster that was going to destroy the city. He says, oh, son, I actually like you after all, right? I I support your decision because now that I know you're fighting monsters and saved all of us, right? But anyone would have been appreciative of that. You know what I mean? He wasn't appreciating Mario for the fact that he wants to pursue plumbing. He was appreciating Mario because he just saved everyone in the city, including himself. Oh, oh man. He's basically basically the dad from Chicken Little. (laughs) This goes back to how you keep saying that the movie needed at least 30 seconds more for some scenes because yeah, like they because the father was not redeemed by the end. The father was not redeemed by the end at all. Like a little bit being, more resolution, please. Him being appreciative of his life being saved, it, anyone would be appreciative of their life being saved, right? But he never actually accepted that Mario wanted to do something that he didn't specifically want him to do. He never had any kind of arc like that. I think they kind of wanted to do something like that, but they just didn't have time. Uh and so they go back to the mushroom kingdom right there's that sort of gag where they're waking up at 8 a.m and you're expecting that they're in brooklyn but then they walk out and they're in mushroom kingdom so i think this is a a weird ending right because it's implying that they wanted to keep on doing their plumbing business but for some reason they stayed in mushroom kingdom even though i would imagine that the mushroom kingdom inhabitants have way less need for plumbing than brooklyn right because they just have like these magic pipes, but I'm guessing they're able to still work on those pipes. I get, I I feel like they're they're not because only being plumbers, but maybe they're also hmm, maybe builders too. Because when too. they wake up, when they wake up, they grab their toolbox of plumbing tools, implying that they're going out to work on plumbing stuff. But they're in Mushroom Kingdom, so I'm assuming that the Toads still have need for plumbing, and they're doing it there. I'm I I I immediately just thought back to the big the beginning of 3D World where Mario and Luigi literally fix a pipe. So maybe situations like that ha- happen yeah, in Mushroom Kingdom. Must, so they that must be you know, what they want us to assume. But I also think it's weird because the whole time they kept telling Peach, "We are going to bring you back and show you our world." So yeah, maybe so maybe that happened off screen. Maybe she just visited and came back to Mushroom Kingdom because maybe she didn't want to like, I, leave her responsibility of being the leader there. I do wonder what happened to the pipe that they all came through and, and got to Brooklyn with, you know? I'm assuming it's still usable, right? Because they went back to Mushroom Kingdom. I guess. Uh, yeah. Also, I, I kind of alluded to it before, but I didn't explicitly mention it when I was talking about Peach uh, is like Princess Bubblegum. I think it's funny. The only reason she's the leader is because... Uh, they found her as a baby, and then once she got to a certain age, she was just automatically smarter than all of them. So they just automatically elected That's her crazy, as man. a leader because they realized <laughs> like crazy. she's smarter than all of us. She's smarter. So imagine it really just that like Princess crap. Bubblegum into the Candy Kingdom. Imagine that uh, crap. You're a freaking baby. Then you just grow up, and then you roll over everyone. Also, I forgot <laughs> to mention. Just called it. Uh, yeah. So this deconfirms the uh, Peachette Crown theory. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? There's a peach at crown theory. Yeah, uh, um, so, hold on. What was that about? Also, when they were doing the training course, the little platform they were standing on, each corner of the platform, it looked like the peach at crown. I didn't notice. Okay, so basically in New Super Mario Bros. Uh, U, U, U Deluxe. Deluxe. Yeah. yeah. They added a power-up called the peach at crown. The, and su- for the, some the reason, super crown, actually. But yeah. yeah. Is, that, is that what it's called? Okay, super well, it turns, Toadette, it turns Toadette into peach at so it was the, the worst mistake they ever uh, did <laughs> instead of just making peach a playable character in the game they made it so that way toadette could turn into peach by putting on the super crown and she's not canonically peach she just looks like peach and has all of peach's abilities and it's called peachette right yes uh, this is where the whole bowsette thing came from which yes <laughs> annoys me beyond belief because of the naming convention because the whole reason toadette is called toadette or the whole reason Peachette is called Peachette is because it's a combination of Peach and Toadette. So Peach et, it's Peach and Toadette put together. So if you were to combine, mm. if if Bowser were to don the crown and become a combination of Peach and Bowser, the name should be like Peachzer or something like that, or Bouch, right? Something like None that. None of those roll <laughs> off the instead, tongue well. 
Yeah, but instead they name him Bowsette, which would be a combination between Bowser and Toadette. I have to point that out every time. It drives me insane. But anyways. You about to make an uh, argument in the comment section of this video about freaking but, Peach Head Bowser nonsense. But All anyways, right. uh, when this power-up was revealed, some people were making the theory because for so long people have been confused. Why is Peach the only human or human-like entity in Mushroom Kingdom other than Mario and Luigi? But Mario and Luigi got teleported there, right? So before Mario and Luigi, why was she the only human in Mushroom Kingdom? So the theory was that it's kind of like a beehive in that all of these toads and toadettes have to elect a queen and they have to kind of groom this person into being the queen. And you know how with bees, they have to feed a, uh, a female bee all this royal jelly and she turns into the queen. Yeah. So the theory is that they elect a toadette and groom toadette into becoming the leader and give that toadette in, in particular a super crown. And so when she puts on the super crown, it turns her into the queen bee, for lack of a better term. And that's why she looks like Peach. I mean, do you, do you, have you heard of this before? <laughs> I never heard of that theory, um, but 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 oh, you you, you talk Gio. I haven't heard it to that full extent, but I was aware <laughs> okay. that there was a theory. Yeah, so there's that there's a, a beehive theory, right? Super Crown is like royal jelly uh, theory, but I think they, I doubt the creators of this movie were even aware of that theory, but if they were aware of that theory, I got the sense they were trying to shoot it down by specifically showing that Peach got teleported here just like Mario and Luigi by one mean or another, right? I think that's for the best, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Um, Peach just arrived at the Mushroom Kingdom as a young girl, and I'm just wondering how the heck, like, where'd she find a warp pipe to get there? It must have just been in some random spot, right? Just like how uh, one was in the sewers in uh, one in the sewers uh, one somewhere else anywhere else okay so we pretty much talked about the whole movie now i think it's where they didn't show peach go to mushroom kingdom i'm it's kind of implied they will go back and forth between the two uh i was thinking that uh with them now having access to go into brooklyn it's kind of setting up for maybe a sequel donkey kong could go to brooklyn and abduct pauline and then you could have a mario versus dk thing right yeah or if you just want like certain things from mushroom kingdom to spill out into brooklyn you could have sort of a new donk city type of place hmm that'd be cool I mean, I mean, and, they, uh, they could do a lot with a sequel. They they could yeah, so, do Mario versus Donkey Kong. Uh, yeah, so let's talk about the uh, after credit scene. Yes. I was hoping for, like, they were going to have a big tennis tournament, and then you hear a wah, and you Mario were, and Waluigi oh are Oh, my God, there. that's what you were hoping for, huh? I was but waiting I for Rosalina. Nintendo, I was I waiting for Nintendo, Rosalina. I don't think Nintendo wants to do them. I was thinking maybe more likely Daisy. I think they'll do Daisy before Rosalina, but it's it yeah. is weird. They have all of this Mario Galaxy baiting, but I think they're baiting that to be like the glue between all of these movies because obviously they're going to make a sequel, right? But the after credit scene in particular was just a Yoshi egg cracking, and I thought that was kind of underwhelming because we've already seen Yoshi, so what is it even hinting? Like Yoshi's going um, to be a big character in the next we, one? We but didn't see a green much. Yoshi in the background. Okay, but more importantly, it was inside of the sewers in Brooklyn. So I think the whole point of that after credit scene is that it was implying that a bunch of stuff from Mushroom Kingdom leaked out into the Brooklyn universe. Brooklyn Dimension. That or just Yoshi. I think they very deliberately showed it in the sewers. So I think they're trying to show like some cross contamination happening, right? So if a Yoshi shows up in Brooklyn, Mario might have to, you know, deal with it. And then that could be how their relationship gets started, right? Because they basically skipped any kind of Yoshi's Island origin story between Yoshi and Mario, considering they already did the baby Mario stuff, right? So you can't really have yeah, there's Yoshi no... carrying around baby Mario anymore. Yeah, because, like, Yoshi's Island, it's like, Mario is a baby in yeah. the Mushroom Kingdom, quote-unquote, even though it's, like, Yoshi's right. Island. Um, this time, like, Mario's a human from Brooklyn, and Yoshi's are showing up here, and, well... Yeah, they definitely have to make some compromises if they're trying to make a single canon timeline of all the Mario games put together, right? So, one of those uh, compromises was probably just, you can't have the Yoshi's Island story, or at least you can't have it exactly as it was with yeah. him carrying around baby Mario. The movie, the, uh, mo the movie's very much its own thing. That's what I'm accepting. And like, uh, Yoshi, um, I'm wondering if they'll make this particular Yoshi at the post credit scene. Like, it'll probably be the green Yoshi. I wonder if they'll make that Yoshi like talk. 
Uh, I don't. I don't, I don't think know. they would ever make Yoshi talk. The sense I got when you saw the Yoshi's in the background for that one part, they kind of just seemed like wild animals. Man, I don't know. <laughs> I think I think they could be intelligent, but I don't think they'll actually speak words. Maybe they'll translate their Yoshi gibber to English at least. Maybe like Toad will understand like, him, and, and, and Toad will have like, to translate. Yeah, maybe Toad can understand, but not Mario and Luigi. Right. I maybe. mean. <sighs> I uh, never mind. I was going to bring up the RPGs again. They talk in the RPGs. They could make them yeah, talk. Yeah, but they could. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know how much they're going to pull from that, man. I know. Uh, and I mean, Yoshi does go, Yoshi. so like that, that is. They that is show a little bit of dexterity. They, with his they mouth. show the I don't kind know. of they, they show the kind of Yoshis that are hunched over and running. But there are the yeah. standing upright Yoshis as well. So well, it's. His character design sort of changed proportions over the years. Originally in Super Mario World, he had a bit more of an animal yeah. mount, mount-like mount uh, physique. And then over time, he started turning more into sort of a humanoid proportional character that could stand upright. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And when they when they were running, it did look like the original character design, how they were sort of more hunched over like a dinosaur. Um, any other things you think could be in potential sequels? Uh I think it would be weird to introduce Rosalina before Daisy, right? Because yeah, you, you, I, Peach, again, Daisy, I was Rosalina just, are the three main girls, and it would be weird to skip Daisy. I was they, only, I was uh, only thinking Rosalina just because the Luma was there. That's right. It. They already established so much Mario Galaxy stuff. I feel like they kind of have to do the Galaxy stuff now, especially don't get to it with how much Galaxy stuff they were uh, baiting, and it literally had no part in the movie at all, even with the Luma. But they purposefully made it like a hint because no one in the cages knew what the Luma was. They kept saying, like, what is that thing? And they don't know. So maybe there's some kind of lost Luma and Rosalina has to come back looking for him. Hmm. I, I think that they're going to bring like Bowser Jr. and the Koopalings. I was going to say that, too. Maybe not the Koopalings fully, but at least Bowser Jr. I think he'd be a good antagonist for the second movie. Well, um, they'd have to explain where the heck they were while Bowser was doing his thing. I guess I guess Bowser maybe. Maybe Bowser has like another like home castle that doesn't float, and that's where the uh, Koopalings and Bowser right. Jr. are. They, they could have Bowser just been taking Jr. over another uh, other worlds. So like the warp pipes. Um, if you if you notice, the one game that isn't really represented in this movie is Mario Sunshine. Uh okay. True. So, and so before Bowser they Jr. But before they the do that, in Mario Sunshine. So well, I'm thinking maybe they could make the next movie focused on Mario Sunshine with Bowser Jr. as the villain. Well, before like, Mario Sunshine. Vacation. Before Mario Sunshine was Luigi's Mansion, and and in that case, like they have to introduce EGAD because EGAD invented both so, the Poltergeist and Flood. Yeah. I think EGAD would be a very useful character. I don't think they're ever going to do a Luigi's Mansion movie though, because they already put Luigi in kind of a scary situation, and they already showed King Boo as kind of just a background character. Yes. Mm. So I think they're not going to do a Luigi's Mansion movie, but I do think EGAD would be a very very easy character to write into any story just because of how uh convenient he is he's in mario and luigi partners in time he makes the time travel stuff true yeah i'm i'm sort of wondering like if they do if they introduce daisy like are we gonna go to sarasa land i was thinking about that that's kind of an inherent issue with daisy because if they do go to sarasa land everything is going to have the weird japanese names because hmm. they didn't have time to translate it and they might not think that's very marketable so i'm thinking if Daisy does show up, it would maybe just be more like a cameo or she's visiting from another place, right? Peach just knows about her. But then it kind of undermines the whole Peach is the only human in this universe type of thing. But maybe maybe Sarsa Land is like another parallel dimension if the Warp Zone stuff gets opened up more in the next movie. Yeah, I just I'm, don't think that Daisy is going to show up because just she's not, not important that enough. important. Yeah, like, Ro Rosalina is so much more important. I if you're want doing Daisy to be important related. because she's a fun character, but she's not a character in anything other than mario yeah. land and i then, just think it's funny he, pauline showed up before daisy freaking rosalina has a freaking backstory you know yeah yeah, yeah she has yeah, a full story uh, uh yeah pa definitely pa pauline i mean they made her mayor of new donk city and now in this movie she's like a news reporter i mean uh, she's it's crazy how even she has a little was more she going a news on reporter when she was on the news i was getting the sense that the news reporters were asking the mayor like how are you going to fix this problem uh, mm, maybe was she the, re what, it. was she the because mayor she or just a news she was, reporter she was trying to calm them down like yep we're going to fix it don't worry <laughs> and then it explodes behind her hmm yeah that's the sense i got 
uh, because she's the mayor of New Dock City, right? Yeah, she's yeah, she's New Dock City mayor. Yeah, so I'm thinking the sequel, I don't think they would fully focus it on Mario Sunshine, at least not on a second movie, maybe a third movie they could focus it on that. Well, but I'm thinking <laughs> m- maybe it could be like similar because it seems very deliberate that there's nothing Mario Sunshine related, especially when PD Piranha could have easily been that big piranha plant in the audience, but wasn't. It seems as if they're deliberately saving well, him, right? Pir- well, P.D. Piranha was, for, was from freaking Al Delfino, and it's like, where even is that? <laughs> like, <laughs> do, like when you think of that, where the heck? Because they, they had to take a plane from the Mushroom Kingdom to that to, to the Al Delfino. It's like, are we even going there right now? Probably not. I'm thinking maybe they could justify it by saying there was so much cross-contamination with the warp zone exploding that a bunch of Mushroom Kingdom inhabitants moved into earth and then you could have a bit of a time skip maybe and like delfino people now live on earth but it would have to be a dolphin shaped island that's kind of hard to justify Uh. i guess isle delfino is just a place on the same planet as mushroom kingdom right that's what i'm thinking maybe it's more likely they'll just use elements from mario sunshine and not necessarily make a whole movie about that well, I mean, but I, then they the only, they wouldn't have the flood, right? I feel like if they did the, yeah, if they used the flood, they would to, that be a they, would they, that be in the whole movie, or would it just be in a scene? I feel like that, like I feel like flood would just have to, would have to be a part of the freaking movie because flood's also a character, not just the freaking yeah, tool. If, if that's the case, they should probably save it for a third movie. I feel like they should probably do more uh, general Mario things. They're focusing in a on movie like before they focus I, on sunshine. I feel fo- like for sequels, the the. The only other thing I would say that we could add would be like adding a rivalry between him and like Wario or something. Like, oh, that's what I'm saying. That would be nice. That's why I was hoping Wario and Waluigi would be in the uh, after credit scenes, but, but I, I don't think Nintendo like, wants to show them at all. Wario and Waluigi would have to be from Brooklyn or somewhere. They could be. Yeah, they, they could be like humans <laughs> well, showing up from somewhere else. Or, they're and, cousins, right? So they don't necessarily need to be living in the same town. They could just show up from some other place. Are they cousins? Plus, Plus, uh, when Wario is wearing his uh, yellow hat with purple overalls, he seems to be in the Mushroom Kingdom dimension, right? But whenever Wario is in Wario where, he seems to be in a regular Earth city. So Wario... <laughs> so I'm thinking I'm thinking Wario could learn about the Warp Zone and think, haha, think of all the treasure I could steal from Mushroom Kingdom, right? That, and that, that could be how he's the antagonist. Wario where and Wario Land is so... Maybe... <laughs> maybe Bowser could like whisper in his ear, maybe say some things like, Oh, I could give you all this stuff if you break me out, right? And so there's sort of a team up with Wario and Bowser. Man, that is War- Mario would be money motivated. The Wario yeah. what, the Wario land stuff in particular feels so disjointed from the Mario stuff. <laughs> I'm just I'm yeah. just like, where the heck where like well, where would Wario be coming from and where like where is he well, at? <laughs> That's why it probably would be more like Mario's actual world. Like well, I, I could see that more than him being from anything related to like the Mushroom Kingdom. Like I, you could start him out with his Wario wear clothes in Earth. Yes. And he learns about that, and then he realizes yes. he switches to the Mario gear when he goes into Mushroom Absolutely. Kingdom. Absolutely. Well, freaking Mario and Luigi wear overalls because they're plumbers. Like why the heck? Why is Mario maybe, wearing uh, overalls? Maybe maybe when Mario you think about it. Is, Maybe Wario hears about his cousin having been there before, and he hears that all the Toads love this guy that's wearing this type of hat and overalls, but he doesn't hear the color. So he thinks, oh, I'm going, to pre- I'm going to pretend to be Mario, and then they're going to give me all this money. And then where, then where, where the heck's Waluigi coming from? Like, oh, God. I, they have, I, they have I, to I literally... don't think, as much as I would like it, I think it's more likely that Wario would show up by himself without Waluigi because Wario showed up as a villain in the Super Mario Land games before Waluigi even existed because yeah. Camelot invented Waluigi because they needed an extra character for the tennis game, right? God, watch them turn Waluigi. I, th- I, th- <laughs> just, just, I think that's why Nintendo hates Waluigi because they didn't make him. You know what? There was a scene where Bowser tore hair off of Luigi's mustache. What if he yeah. freaking takes that hair and turns... <laughs> what if he turns the hair into a freaking Waluigi because it's like, you know, you take DNA and you turn into a <laughs> clone is, of someone. Evil clone. Oh, that, God. That is that's an like, insane theory, and I love it. <laughs> that's oh, like some God. Mortal Kombat Shao Kahn cloning Katana to make Molina I can't, type I can't of thing. think of where he would come from. I just don't know. Who's even named Waluigi? You, you think like, cloning him with Luigi's mustache hair would be more likely than him just having a cousin on Earth somewhere? Holy cow! <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm like, I'm thinking about this all of a sudden. It's like, 
where would this man come from? Well, what if they just both end up being clones? Both Wario and Waluigi. They're basically yeah, so, uh, plays on both their names. Like, uh. So any other ideas for the sequel? I think the main standing theories are it'll be either Bowser Jr. or Wario as the main antagonist in the next movie, right? Hmm. I'm with, thinking with some galaxy stuff. I would with say some so. galaxy themes. Like maybe Rosalina shows up, Wario and Bowser are the villains. There might be an uh, maybe. There might be an emphasis on Yoshi, and if that's the case, the uh, Bowser Jr. and the Koopalings will probably show up and we're getting sort of a Mario World thing, and yeah. then they sprinkle some other yeah. stuff in. But also, if it is like Mario Galaxy, and you're lumping Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 in together, Yoshi's were in Mario Galaxy 2 as a pretty big element, and they got all these different power-ups. I think that would be a completely like separate movie. I think Galaxy will will be like the third one if they make a I third think like, one. Right. Yeah. I think Galaxy yeah. is supposed to be the end game, but I'm thinking you could still have these underlying themes of Galaxy. Like you could introduce Rosalina in the second movie, but have all the full on Galaxy Planet stuff happening at the end. Right? I, saw, I I say you just hint at her in the second movie. Like the the, the second movie will just be like I think Bowser Jr. and Koopalings would be the central focus. Tiny Bowser would be a constant gag uh, throughout or something, yeah. and then like Yoshi is just p- more prominent, and there's like more other Mario stuff sprinkled about. Peach is along for the ride. Uh, I'm not yeah. sure if they would do anything from like Mario to USA, uh, you know, with Mario like, is missing with like like Birdo oh, no, and, Mario. Wart and whatever. No. <laughs> I like I don't know. No. Not Mario is missing, of course. Not that. No. <laughs> they could say that line. Oh, yeah, they'll say that like now. <laughs> no. They could go to a hotel. <laughs> a hotel. Uh, so we're almost on two hours, which is going to be about how long our Sonic 2 movie review was. So anything else you want to say before we wrap it up? Want to uh, uh, review um, your overall thoughts on the movie? I think, the ro- again, I think the Rotten Tomato score is being way too harsh. It's like a 58%. How Those people must be so sad to watch a movie like this and think it's bad, right? How could you think this movie's bad? Everything in it looks amazing. I, I don't know why they were expecting the story to be anything different because... Yeah, the story's really really simple. It's like go from point A to point B to point C, but what else could you write? Everything in the game is pretty faithful to the games. And I think anyone that's even just remotely a, a fan of the games in general, even if they just, even if they've only played like a few hours of one of the games, there's something for them to enjoy in the movie, right? Yeah, of course. It's 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 it, it, I I think Geo said this earlier, but it's like, yeah, just smile on your face whole freaking way through. Um, it's, I, I mean, I, I, I went with my, I went with my brother in like an early showing and like, there were actually still some kids there somehow, uh, <laughs> friggin', yeah. friggin', the, listen, I, I, I'm just saying in the theater and the kids are like entertained seeing Mario be Mario and all that. And it's like, yeah, man, like that's what this movie's about. It's just like good family fun. Uh, it's very video gamey because of the 2D angle shots, all the power ups, right. all the references. You got references from 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 yeah, the mu. Th- th- there's apparently like 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 over 150 music references from what I've heard, uh, which is kind of nuts. Just so many references to like the if, classic I games. If there are full versions of some of those uh, little light motifs that appeared, like when it has the Super Mario Bros. Th- three music playing for just a few seconds when he gets the tanuki suit i'm wondering if there's a full version of that for example maybe it's on the soundtrack yeah i'm going to have to listen to it yeah it's just like the, 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 just so many little references packed in all the punch out all like all, all the references to the 80s games arcade games yeah. nes games I can't and then you got all the modern stuff this long i can't believe it took this long for them to make a movie i think nintendo was just like I think Nintendo was was being because of course I guess they have to they're being like really careful about who they choose to it, you know yeah, especially they made a Mario movie. movie yeah uh, maybe with all of the uh, Illumination movies that have been being made lately Nintendo finally saw a potential uh, suitor there was like the, there was like the, the at the be- at the start the Illumination logo there was the gag with the minion in a cart <laughs> yeah I mean that that, that, yeah, that was fun that was fun that. yeah that was well, that, that was a fun say- little thing. Only thing I'll say is like, even though I, I liked both the Sonic and Mario movies, I want more video game movies to take the Mario approach in terms of faithfulness Full of because, just all CG, like all animation instead of the live well, action hybrid. Like, sure, Sonic. that's that's fine. But what's the Sonic movie? I, I think that the storytelling was was good and everything. But the fact that like it wasn't fully faithful, it, it didn't like go all in in terms of like the story and the references and stuff like that. It was set in the real world. So it, it that just 
took me a it's little bit yeah, out of it. It's inherently so, limiting it to an extent when they do that. But it's I get that they're doing it to introduce a new audience basically to it so that it's a little bit more accepting to them. But I like the movies being faithful like Mario. I because I play the games, so I know the games there. I want it to be faithful for me. <laughs> I think I, I, I think and obviously this is a Mario freaking video, but like I, I, I probably think so. The reason why uh, Sonic is like a CGI live action hybrid is probably because of like adventure games, the Sonic adventure games where yeah, it's like Sonic X. Yeah, it's like, you know, you got Sonic and friends around actual yeah. humans and junk. Yeah, um, he has much more of a history of being like this weird, odd one out in a city of otherwise normal humans. Whereas in Mario, everything's always weird and abstract. Yeah, I mean, I guess they could have taken like a Sonic Unleashed approach with the Sonic movie and just had all the humans stylized and junk. Yeah. But uh, no, I'm still cool with the Sonic movies. Uh, and the Mario oh, movies, like, like did the Mario movies is great, like... I definitely I know want to a lot see of people again. are going to be comparing the Sonic movie to the Mario movie, but I think it's oh, important to know. I think it's important to realize that the Sonic movie, your impression of the Sonic movie might be also improved with the Sonic 2 movie. And you need yes. to realize that Sonic has the advantage of having two movies out already, whereas Mario only has one. So I'm trying yes. to compare the, the Mario movie to only the first Sonic movie and not Sonic 2, right? Hmm. Yeah, I think if you're just comparing the first Mar- uh, the first Sonic movie, uh, uh, th- this movie kind of blows it out of the water uh, for me. Yeah, because I like the Sonic 2 movie way more than the first one. Yes. Well, the Sonic- I, 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 lo- I love that they added Tails and Knuckles. That just makes it so much makes so much of a difference. Right. Yeah, I mean, Sonic movie one it was Sonic movie one is an origin movie you know kind of like the mario movie really yeah and uh yeah sonic 2 movie they threw a lot more wait. sonic stuff in it's like okay, i can't cool. wait after both movies get their trilogies we can get the mario and sonic movie the crossover movie <laughs> it'll be like a uh, mario and sonic at the man, Olympic Games i don't think they're doing that <laughs> i don't think yeah, make that, yeah make i don't that think movie. they will but i think it's Listen. really nice that we're getting mario movies and sonic movies concurrently it feels crazy that b- both of those are happening at the same time, right? I'm very, very happy about it. Yeah, me, me, Miyamoto is just breathing down all the animators' necks. <laughs> like, yeah. you better, you you better he, do this right. You know he had a tight chokehold on them because when the movie starts, it says a Miyamoto production. It says like it says the other guy's name from the, Illumination the head, or whatever, the, but the it head, says the head of Illumination, Shiguru, yeah. yeah, the head of Illumination Chris. and Shigeru Miyamoto. So, yeah. That's that's kind of weird because obviously, you know, legally speaking, when uh, when a studio gets outsourced to make a movie for something, typically, you know, they have to sign a contract at first. They can do these things. They can't do these things like this character can't curse. Right. This character can't get decapitated or whatever. But once that's signed, they get full creative freedom to do whatever they want. Right. Which is why in a lot of cases, like with the most recent Doom movie, when they asked uh, when they got asked on Twitter if they had any involvement with the Doom movie, they said they have nothing to do with it. Like they didn't even want to be related to it at all. But in this case, I think Miyamoto just has so much respect to his name at Nintendo that even though he doesn't legally have any kind of actual leadership position or say on how Illumination made the movie, they still sort of treated him like a boss, even though he wasn't the boss. Mm-hmm. Right. He's a maker of Mario. He pretty much is the boss. <laughs> yeah, so it, it must have just been a respect thing to essentially put his name on the uh, beginning of the movie like that. Yeah, yeah. I did, but they pretty much have to. Like, Miyamoto has to treat this kind of like how he's kind of kind of like when they release a Mario game, even though he's yeah. not like he's not like you super hear all those like, you know, uh, he's, he's not like super. uh involved with the games but like you know it's just still you hear all those weird stories you hear all those weird stories about how uh, the most recent paper mario game he was super obsessed about you cannot modify any of these uh, enemy designs. You, you cannot put a hat on that goomba you hate cannot it, make the scuba hate it, shoes. Yeah. Hate so it. i wonder i yeah. wonder if there was a lot of that stuff going on in this movie right the main toad has a backpack but he might have been okay with that because there's already a captain toad character but other right. than the toad wearing a backpack there's like a Koopa with an eye patch. You might have been sweating a little bit from that one. Maybe, <laughs> maybe someone had illumination had to really convince him to be allowed to have an eye patch on a Koopa. But that's pretty much the extent of it. So I wonder how much involvement Miyamoto actually had. Right? You can never know. Freaking! I heard that like for the voices in particular. Like I mean, I guess it's like a standard process. But like they had to, they were just picking out voice actors, and then 
I don't know. They they they, they narrowed it down to a few. They they started listening to the voices along with pictures of the 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 characters in the movie, and then you know then they brought Miyamoto in, and then they're letting Miyamoto decide like, okay, who's voicing these characters and all that junk. That's just that that's just one example that I heard of him. Yeah, because of Miyamoto just as, like being you know. as weird as the Chris Pratt Mario casting is. It's kind of hard to argue with it if Miyamoto it himself was, is the one it that was decided Miyamoto it. approved yeah, directly so from the man. You can't really argue. Uh, anyways, we're over the two hour mark now. And so all of you guys that are still watching, I'm assuming if you've watched this far, uh, you also have things to say about the movie. So let us know in the comments. And of course, I will be uh, including uh, the links from Geo and Nitro Sonic in the description so you guys can check them out as well. And anything else you guys want to say before I wrap up the video? Any other plugs? Uh, there were plenty of other little tiny references that I'm sure that you'll see if you watch the movie for yourself, but oh, I, yeah, I sure definitely recommend. Stuff. Yeah, uh, I definitely recommend watching it, though. It's just a joy to experience yeah, it's, a video it's game a must movie watch. like that. And I heard it's breaking records in some other countries right now. So I think everyone is pretty much on the same page where they're just watching it regardless of what the reviews say. I don't think anyone's really going to care about or remember the uh, critic reviews after a few years. It's pretty much on track to be like that, that like the most successful uh, anime movie. I really thought it was going to be on par, like roughly around the Sonic movie success, just a little bit more successful. But it's looking like it's going to be way more successful. The, than so Sonic. the Sonic movie had a shocking success, is more like it. But right. I mean, but again, but I mean, the Mario good. movie, the Mario movie probably had a much higher budget with everything being animated. Sonic probably didn't cost as much to make. I do, yeah. The first, the first song in particular. No, that 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 was that did not look expensive at all. Yeah, <laughs> the most expensive thing would just be the actors, I guess. Right. I don't uh, know, just else? and just just animating Sonic. Oh, uh, freaking! Hey, man, I'm just I'll just I'll just echo what I said. Great movie, fun time, good for the whole family. Uh, I'm definitely getting that Blu-ray because I gotta freaking <laughs> I gotta go back yeah. and see those references, man. Yeah, I should get the I should get the star shaped Blu-ray. Maybe I can display it. Like maybe I can put it in my mystery box tin if it can fit. Oh wow, that'd be kind of sick. Yeah, I also got this. Uh, I got this uh, Yoshi egg. My friend got me this Yoshi egg lamp, and oh, wow. I wanted to see if it could fit in the tin. And uh, at first, I was disappointed that it could barely not fit. But then I realized that's actually a good thing because with it barely not fitting, it's kind of sticking out of the top, and it makes it look as if you hit the mystery block from underneath, and the egg is coming out. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> fun stuff like so uh anyways uh i guess i'll wrap the video up now <laughs> yeah I, I should have showed that off at the beginning but i guess that's just a little we something can't extra help for but anyone talk about some more watching the entirety of the video <laughs> <clears throat> so uh thanks everyone for watching nice having you here and i will see all of you guys later so bye for now bye pasanos take care guys